So, um, fucking what a journey. We are mm. here with John Elliott. Mm. And In- wow. Incredible. Yeah. Like, actually, yeah. Fucking awesome. It was like, Such, a, yeah. uh, it was like Alan Roberts with animals. Yeah. <laughs> so, we've, uh, what are we talking about? Well, first of all, you, you trekked from where to where? Uh, well, through every state and territory yep. and seven of the ten major Australian deserts, 12,173 kilometres. With? Walking with? With a team of six camels. <laughs> <laughs> and a brusky. And brusky the dog, the, dog, the yeah. dingo cattle dog. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's an incredible journey. Um, it's such a cool, um, uh, like a, a, a conversation about like chasing, changing your life. Yeah, and, and sea change. Sea change and, and just like, yeah, uh, ch- the change, the Evolution in yourself. Was, yeah. 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 Great it's to hear. Incredible. We come across lost spears and artifacts, camels in the snow, yeah. camels being winched up the side of a hill. Yeah. Uh, How owning a camel is like owning a pair of tits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I think we'll start on that. Yeah. Well, let's get hard. Let's get hard. Welcome to Hard Yarns Podcast. I am fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Chris White says, please <laughs> disregard it. 5D is actually a state of being. It's a unity consciousness. That was Hard Yarns with me, Frankie Rose. So I'm going to throw it over to your co-hosts. Daniel Delby and Cameron Brand. I would do this and then I'd gong. <laughs> Free in attendance. Sick. For the millions listening at home. <laughs> Let's get hard. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers. That's, that's a good way to start. Ching, ching. Yeah. Ching, ching. Oh, we got there. Delhi doesn't want to. Nah, I'm not. Delhi's rough still. I'm completely <laughs> fucked from <laughs> Fisher on uh, Sunday. So, mm. the boys are having a beer. I had copious amounts. Uh, that's my first beer since the run, Delby. Nice. It's actually that's going down very nice. Is this the full full strength? This as is well? about, yeah, this yeah. Is the whole yeah. Definitely this well deserved. This um, isn't hair of the dog; it's hair of the camel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mate. I'm actually pretty excited about this one because I remember following a bit of the journey, uh, especially at the start and. It's mentioning to Delby, fuck, when he gets back, we've got to get him on and have if a chat. If he gets back. If yeah. he gets back. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, mate, like, if you want to just sort of tell us what, what the basic uh, idea of what you did yeah. and uh, <sighs> Where did and who start? came along for the journey. <laughs> yeah, well, like, so four weeks ago I rolled into Geraldton with six camels. So <laughs> for people that don't know, I've spent the last three and a half years strolling across from, uh, or through every state in Australia pretty much yeah, uh, wow. with a team of Started off with four and ended up with six camels. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but no, no background in camels. What? Had no idea. Fuck it, I'm gonna walk. I better bring a camel. Well, you know, yeah. you, you know how some people say, "Oh, it's a lifelong dream," or I saw something, or I was inspired. No, yeah, I, yeah same as you. Did on you the Sunday, I just got wanked on red wine. And <laughs> <laughs> someone mentioned camels on the first day at work on Monday. Just Google, how do you buy a camel? Like, uh, so you've gone to thirsty camel for red wine. No, no, <laughs> he's got confused. He thought the guy mentioned camel pack. And <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need a camel pack for the journey. So, so you 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 mag it on red wine, and then you're like, I should buy a camel. No, no, no. So look, I, I was working an office job. Yeah. Right. So I uh, started an insurance broking company when I was 25. Yeah. Yep. Elliot Insurance Brokers. So that had kind of grown to a point where I don't know I was kind of looking for something else. Like uh, it felt like I was just rolling the arm over. Mm punching the money cow, you know, just at, there to collect the check. So yep. I was like, I shouldn't really be here at mm. the moment in this mode. Like, I've, I've got to chase something else, do something else. So I had this idea that, look, I've, I know I've got to leave, yep. but I've got no idea what's next. Mm. Okay. So I, it took me about a year to kind of prep everything up to, to leave, but I still had no idea what I was going to do. And a couple of months before I leave, I'm having those red wines with this uh, this girl from England. Yeah. And, and she mentions this story, this travel story when she was going through Kenya because we're trading adventures, yep. adventure stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, I'm 19, I enter this camel race. It's a two-day camel race. I'm the only white person and the only girl in the race. And I come second. And <laughs> oh, she, fuck. And she wins enough money to pay for a whole trip. And what? I, um, we were like four bottles deep. And I was like, oh, you got a few camels in Australia. And look, mum had previously a said... Few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mum had said, oh, look, because I said I'm going to do a motorcycle trip. She's like, nah, motorcycles are dangerous. Don't do that. So midnight, I give her a call. Don't worry, I'm going to take camels. <laughs> so, <laughs> slower, safer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she didn't re- quite realise I was going to, you know, hit seven of the ten major Australian deserts in the process. Fucking so, hell. yeah, th- th- that was the initial idea of... Um, <laughs> 
all right, we, we're going to get some camels yeah. and, uh, you know, instead of motorcycles. But we wanted to do a trip. Uh, I say we, just me. Yeah. Uh, wanted, <laughs> wanted to do a trip uh, just under my own steam. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I start the process literally from Google and just go, you know, how do you buy a camel? And it puts me onto a guy who did a six and a half thousand kilometre trek. So yeah. With camels. and With camels. Well. Oh, he took his wife, so, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So he, he teaches a little bit. So I go over to Lakes Entrance in Victoria and he yeah. starts teaching us how to tame and train wild camels. So that was the, the, the first okay. step in starting to get so this you, thing going. So that you weren't just purchasing, you were trying to tame wild camels? Well, I called him up originally and said, oh, look, uh, can I just borrow a few of yours? I didn't really know how this whole thing works. Yeah, he goes, yeah. mate, come over and I'll teach you how to train some yourself. Yeah. And um, you, you know, the best way to do it is to get your own camels, preferably wild camels, Train them what? yourself so you, you do it all from the ground up. So Fuck. as the camels learn, you learn, you know, because you both, you know, a wild camel and you at the moment both have no fucking idea what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so at least you're starting on the same page as the animal, you know. So wow. this journey like across is like a journey of growth, not only for yourself but the camels with you, like trying to create this sort of relationship and grow and well, learn. The whole lot. It, it took me over a year to, to get everything ready. Yeah. So from that moment where I jumped in the car and headed across the lakes entrance in Victoria, it was over a year later that so I started. So you drove started. there instead of flying? Yeah, yeah. Right. Dr- drove across, um, started to learn a bit there. Then we, I drove back to Parabadoo yep. in WA. Yep. I actually got some wild camels and started to train them for someone else okay. and, and learned a little bit more. Okay, but yeah. in total, I did two weeks of training courses Yeah. before I'm like, all right, fuck it, it's time to get some okay, camels. Hang on. I'm gonna get this. So how old are you when you decide that you're going to – Go with the camels, like because you got a year to prep. So how yep. old are you when you're decided? Thirty five. So 35. I'm thirty five when I take off. Okay. Now, when you just say, "Yeah, got some wild camels and fucking tamed them," what do you mean? Did you like just go out and just grab a camel by the hump and be like, "Fucking, you're mine." Now, now hearing you, <laughs> all right, speak about it like that, I was like, "That's exactly what I tried to do." <laughs> <laughs> I remember being in that seat. I, yeah, what do we do? And so the first idea was like, "Well, let's." Well, they're in the desert, so let's yeah. get out there. So I get out into the little sandy desert, and I'm just flying a drone around, trying to round some <laughs> wild camels up. I had rope in the back of the unit. I'm like, yeah, I just bring him close with the drone and get a rope on him. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit hard of him. Three and a half weeks to run around the desert and I'm like, all right, we need, we, we need to find some other way yeah. of doing this. So, so, so what's 101 from, from your camel school then? Like, does he, does he teach you how to go catch a wild camel or the camels yes. are there and you start from having a camel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, but he I didn't gonna, teach you how to get no, the camel? No, no. <laughs> I didn't realise you needed like helicopters, buggies <laughs> and yards. Holy so fuck. anyway, I'm, uh, I get back into to Newman and yeah. on Facebook someone hits us up and goes, oh, I've got a few extra camels. I'm all the way over in Mill Merrin, which is just near uh, Toowoomba in okay. Queensland. Mm. Um, so originally I was just going to go for a little stroll down the Canning Stock Route or something like this, and and then or maybe out to Alice, and then so this guy in Queensland's like, oh, you can bring it, you can come over and grab four camels off me. Yeah. And I was like, if I get them in Queensland, that means I'm going to have to walk all the way across Australia. So yeah. Like, Look, give me 24 hours to try and just chew that one over. So <laughs> Messaged him back the next day. I was like, fuck it, I'm going all the way across. All right, I'll I'll see you in a month. I'll I'll get it whatever I need to tied off here, and I'll come over and grab those camels. So. It seemed a lot easier than going back out with the drone. <laughs> the desert, so I head yeah. out and I get these get these four camels. I actually buy three, get one free. So oh wow, yeah. so that's a deal. <laughs> yeah, so I'll walk. I'll walk the other half just to know yeah. that deal. Just to put one free camel. Hump day special. <laughs> so, Fucking bargain. How so good. he's got these wild camels, or were they semi trained? No, nah, they were wild. So these guys were caught out near in the Simpson Desert okay. and then uh, taken to this farm. Yeah, right. But I guess my next point is, had you ever done any kind of extreme heat, walking, distance, training or anything? No, I was Uber's best customer. If it's wow. more than a K, I'm on to, I'm on to an Uber. Oh, fucking I, lo- hell. So I love that though. That just said that full sea change. That scares yeah, the shit out of me. But nah. it's also like, it's starting. To, it's definitely going in that hard yarns sort mm. of uh, mantra that we go with. You know, you, you reach that point where you realise there's more to life and yeah. you want to sort of adventure and try different things. You're yeah. fucking... You've got to do it. Like Alan Roberts, yeah, like yeah, got on the motorbike. Yeah, yeah, and then exactly, yeah. Along. yeah. But I suppose you know, what I left behind, you know, like that company I built, that was that was my baby. I love yeah. that so much. So if I'm going to leave something I love like that much, yeah. uh, I've got to throw myself right into whatever's next. Yeah. So all I knew that whatever I was going to do next was going to get every fucking thing that I had. Yeah. So 
I didn't enter into it lightly, even though it sounds like, uh, you know, yeah. kind of played around. I, I was, you know, committed deeply and went, all right, this is what we're doing until it's complete. So, yeah. so prior to leaving, did you learn how to, to, you know, potentially live off the land? Yeah. That's no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and did you have to through the... Through yeah. The, wow. <laughs> so you know, my thought was the first half of the trip, right, will train me for the second half of the trip. Mm. So, And I was in mainly populated areas or country towns for the first bit, so I got to slowly wean myself off that yep. until uh, the last two years I hit those bigger gaps and pretty much spent nearly two years out in Central Australia. Jesus. Just yeah, alone. Right. Uh, well, you know, occasionally there Ish. might be a... You know, French backpacker or something. <laughs> yeah. Ivan Malat's just yeah. left one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. So, yeah. what, so, you, so after three and a half weeks of not catching a camel, you've been told you go over and now you've got to break these camels in or tame these camels? Yeah, so... How I, do you go I, about that? Well, the guy who had the property, uh, he, he said, oh, you, you can take him, you start training him in the yard here, there's a caravan there, you can live there, you know, for a month or so until you've got these guys trained up. Mm. Yeah. After a few days, he starts to smell a rat. He's like, this guy's got no fucking idea what he's doing yeah. and he's doing it in my yard. <laughs> so <laughs> so oh, I got away with that for about a, a month and yeah. he's like, look, can you just grab those camels, oh, get a truck, and get the fuck <laughs> off my property <laughs> before I end up with a liability issue. So yeah. I get off and I head to this camel dairy in uh, Gympie and this guy was, uh, that was there, um, Wayne Morris, he, he was uh, he was much more patient. You yeah. know, so he was happy to teach and, uh, and guide us through a little bit. And so it, is this... Did you go to get the four camels after you'd done your two-week training? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah. that wasn't working. No, look, it, I, I take into a point, but I couldn't take it as far as I needed to okay. to have the confidence to actually load these camels up. Even my gear was all behind the eight ball. I'd tried to build all my own saddles. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I come from an office background, not necessarily a trades background. Like so ergonomic so. saddles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a standing dex version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> standing <laughs> It's just an exercise ball on top of the camel. <laughs> 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 Yeah, fuck. So, so uh, yeah, so I was, I, was, I was further back than full back. So yeah. um, a couple of people took, started to take me under their wing. And now once I've been, you know, living and doing this for the seven or eight months, just trying to actually get the thing started, yep. people are starting to take you seriously. You're no longer just a boy from the city who's not going to do it. Like yep. you're, you're living in a tent for that whole entire time yep. and living where you are, make, making it fucking happen. Yep. So. Mm. And a camel dairy in Gympie, you wouldn't want to get that confused with a camel gimp in a dairy. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that never happens. <laughs> a spit more than a camel. Oh, um, fuck, that's so good. what is a camel dairy? Both, both like to be milked. Though. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what, what is a camel dairy? Is that like somewhere that holds camels? Mm. Yeah, yeah, so where camel milk's getting more and more popular both for oh, uh, legit wow yeah okay. yes skincare products they're pretty good yep. for skincare uh, people who are lactose intolerant um because yep. the camel milk's got lower allergens can generally have camel milk yeah, yeah right uh, but everything's a new fucking superfood these days right yeah, so you yeah, know yeah. everyone's got their selling points for it but yep. uh, yeah. there does seem to be a fair bit behind the camel milk oh. thing so did they did um i'm gonna jump forward real quick and then come back did that was that something that you would um drink while you're Traveling? Did well, you mine, drink were, mine were all boys, so it was more like oh, chewing it. Okay. No, like, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was, that was definitely like a protein pack yeah. super food. <laughs> that, that had to be in your mind as well. Like the you camel have, gimp. If you're, if you're hungry, starving, you could just. You could go a camel. Hey, you could go a camel. camel. Would that be something that you would have had or to consider? Or at least like your children. Yeah, well, well I, I, I hadn't thought about it, but I know. Are you sure it, you didn't start with six and end up with four? Yeah. I, I know that which, which one I would take. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, if puffs come to shove, there would be no eeny, meeny, <laughs> It's just like, Arthur, you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> so which ones are there? Is that the, uh, you, say five, prick, eh? you say five and a half. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. is it? Well, little Charlie, he's, he was, he was uh, only seven months old when yeah. we first started walking with us. So, you know, yeah, he's, right. he's the half. But yeah, yeah Arthur's like that, um, He's like that camel, or that guy, <laughs> that guy that you work with, right? And he does a good job, not bad, you know. You say hi when you go through, yeah. but you'd never go for a beer with the cunt after yeah. work. <laughs> like, you know, just like, it was like five o'clock, he is dead to you, Done. all right? And yeah. it was the same, like every day, as soon as the packs were off, yeah. Arthur would go off, and it was, it was mutual. Yeah, He's like, I don't want to <laughs> fucking see you tomorrow morning. I'm like, fuck off till morning. Yeah, right. He's just not a very sociable kind of camel, and yeah. in comparison to the extremely... 
you know, close co- uh, relationship and connection I had with some of the others. Yeah. But do you have to tie them down when you, or can you just sort of let them roam and they're fine, they come back to you, or what's the? Well, and this uh, is probably why he's a cunt. Very, <laughs> very, very results. No, look, they, they they're a herd animal, so if one one goes, they all go. Yeah. Um, I lost them a few times. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. So the last time I lost them, um, I was uh, just south of this place called Mount Liebig. Yeah. And there's a guy who was a filmmaker, he, he came along, Cam Watt, he came along uh, occasionally and he'd do a bit of filming and yeah. put together a bit of a doco for this trip. So he's out, I hadn't seen him for a little while, another one of my mates that I met in Alice Springs, he's out, a couple of locals are out and we just, we get on it. Yeah. Right? So I completely forgot the step of towing the camels up. <laughs> <laughs> So they've just busted through this little fence. And so we've woken up. I also, I fell out of a tree that night. Bad, bad day. All right, so I'm, I'm slightly concussed, all right? Yeah. Fairly fucking hung over. And yeah. I get out and the first thing I see is like no camels in the fence down. I'm like, fuck. fuck. And I, I haven't passed fuck. a fence for 2,000 Ks. And I didn't pass another fence for about 3,000 Ks after that moment. Oh, so wow. there is nothing out there. So you... First thing I was like, look at the map, all right, where may they have gone based on where the natural lay of the land Jesus. is. So I'm trying to coordinate this, this rescue attempt Search for these camels. And rescue. Right. That's a freedom break. Everyone's hung over. Yeah. All right, so I just put three litres of water on my back, a couple of protein bars, packet of shapes, and fucking I'm off. Yeah. It took me 30 kilometres. Jesus. 30 kilometres before I finally caught up with them. Oh. So... Um, it was a you know, pretty warm day as well. Uh, who uh, did you get first, Arthur? You're like, get here, you all together. <laughs> they were all together, <laughs> yeah. mate. This is Fuck. like that, uh, and not in a good That's way. That's a half marathon that? to get your camel back. What's, yeah. What's that uh, <clears throat> documentary? The you, Judas Camel. The Judas Camel. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Shot in Western Australia, wasn't yeah. it as well? Mm. Yeah. That's pretty. For people that don't know, it's about how camels are herd animals, and they put a collar on Judas collar. I think it was called. Yep. Put a collar on the camel. He goes and finds a pack, and then they fly in a helicopter and just. <laughs> shoot them all because they're pests and then they leave the Judas camel and he goes and joins another one and and then eventually the camel is sentient enough to realise everywhere he goes is death and destruction so he just roams the desert by himself. And that's 100% legit. Yeah. You know, that actually happens. Yeah. Mm. The guy who actually trained all those camels and who majority of the camels were in that film, mm. like the owner, he, he only passed away like three months ago. Yeah, actually. right. Chris O'Hara. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, th- there's three different kinds of groups of camels out there. So you've got your main big herd uh, with um, your dominant bull, bunch, harem of females, oh bunch yeah. of y- young, yeah. That's, yeah. It. that's <laughs> where I want to be if I'm a camel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all, the, all his uh, offspring. Yeah. And as soon as the young bulls grow up to be like a bit of competition, yep. he just boots them all out. Nice. Uh, and then they form a bachelor pack. Yeah. Right, so they they form their own little pack, and there's a dominant bull in that. Yeah, there'll always be a bull that challenges for the leadership. Yeah, all right. So they, like I said, intensely herd animal. So that you know, that one wants to rule the roost. Yep, he'll lose. Well, one of them will lose. He'll get cast out. He becomes a rogue bull camel. Mm. They're the ones we had to worry about out there. Because he will come in to challenge for the leadership of any pack, right. or boys or girls. He doesn't matter. It's like either be out there alone or come in, fuck with the biggest guy. Deck him, yeah, right, and then join that pack. How do they deck? Okay. Is it literally bang like? Yeah, that? yeah. They're, so they're throwing their heads around. You know, th- that mate, they would straight up get up and throw the front front legs as well. Fuck right? yeah. and cool. it, but they they come in. They try with a surprise attack. So they just come in out of nowhere and just absolutely Fuck. hammer. I was going to ask Cowards that, like, punch. if you came across other like herds of camels. We had sixty of those attacks, just over sixty attacks along the way. What? So, so 60, 60 so what, sneak attacks from a camel. Oh, yeah. It's so like being in Northbridge, but way more dangerous. <laughs> what do you Pretty do? Pretty much. What do you do then Th- in that uh, situation? D- 308, straight out. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So, occasionally you try and scare them away. But, for example, you scare them away in the late afternoon. Yeah. You're just delaying that attack to sometime at midnight or, you know, yeah, right. whilst you're trying to sleep. So, mm. any attack in the afternoon, you've got to down it. So if I was walking along with my camels, maybe I could just smash a macadaka out or, you know, a, a big speaker on the front camel. Yeah. So just absolutely blast that stereo and just run at it like a crazy man. They might run off then, but yeah. Yeah. once you're in camp, uh, they're, they're coming in to, to so you kill one of your boys. So you've got to shoot them. Yeah, right. But, I mean, there's, there's advantages to that. 
you know, like uh, I don't I never had to go up hunting. It's like yeah. I was going to say, it's come to you. Bang, here comes Uber dinner. Eats. I was going to say, would <laughs> Uber Eats. <laughs> the Uber eats yeah. Would you eat? I was going to say, would you eat the, the meat? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The back straps are really nice. Yeah, yeah right. right. And it's fairly decent size as Does well. This, again, you would have gone in with no experience of how to do this. No, no I, I learned how to hack up a camel when I shot my first camel. Really? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> how was so, that? Yeah. Like, what were you like? I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Just crying. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's actually a little video where I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm just dealing with the fact that I was shot because I, I quite like these animals. Yeah, 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 yeah of I've course. I'm in love with them. And, yeah. and your um, pack seen you do this and like, fuck. We, yeah, yeah, Arthur, yeah, yeah. Arthur's just like, oh, no, nah, all right, I'll do what you're you just, say. Yeah, you're just looking at Arthur <laughs> going, like, fucking watch yourself. Shit, that, <laughs> that's serious. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, I, I was going through a little bit and I was sitting down and the, the filmmaker was out there, Cam was out there, so he's filming me like, yeah, I just didn't have an option, didn't have an option. Mm. Yeah. Right, and then it just cut straight to me like, Roasting the camel. <laughs> 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 so, it, was, it, was a, it was a couple of hours, though, you know, yeah. where, where I, I, you know, dealt with it. And then I was like, well, we're not going to waste him. Yeah. You know, we, you know. Well, that's probably the better way of thinking about it. Like, yeah. don't mm. kill it for no reason. At least get something out of it. Yeah. yeah, I don't like it when they go out and do the aerial culls. You know, yeah. they just go out there and they've just got a quota to now 15 to 20,000 of these things. And then just like left to rot out in mm. the middle of yeah. nowhere. But 20,000 camels. Oh, we, how many are there out there? They reckon there's somewhere. If you speak to the pastoralists, they'll say there's about a million. If you speak to Whoa. some of the experts, they'll say that's five hundred thousand or thereabouts. And Jeez. depending on the agenda that people are trying to actually, you know, yeah, get across, they they'll they'll vary those. those but they're, numbers. Con- they're considered a pest. Is that right? Considered a pest. Yeah. What's what for? Because of destruction of the like the, the agriculture around, or what's the? Oh, because you can't make money out of them, probably. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so Surely there's a, a market for the meat. If there's that much free meat just floating around, there's a couple of complications. Though you know they're quite tall, mm. right? So where you transport uh, cattle on double decks, yeah, uh, they can only go on a single. So you double your transport costs. Mm. So you got less meat on the animal, mm. and your transport cost is double. Mm. So that kind of blows them out a fair bit for a viable, yeah, uh, you know, alternative yeah. meat. Yeah. Um, well, maybe. And, so are they really slow, like walking with? Or are they? They're th- quite slow to walk with. Like they, they can, can get a bit. Of, they can get a bit of speed on. Mm, you yeah. know, probably five k slower than so a Melbourne Cup winner. I was watching yeah, this right. um, this uh, documentary recently uh, called Human Playground. Yeah. I don't know. If, have you seen that? No. It's fucking incredible. Have you seen Is that it? Epstein's Island? <laughs> 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 the human Playground is like just basically the human human uh, species pushing themselves to their limits and what yeah. they can do. And the first. The very first part of the very first episode is this fucking ridiculous ultra marathon that goes across, I think, the Sahara Desert. Yep. And the one method of whether you are in or out of this race is you have to stay ahead of this camel <laughs> every day. So it's about a five to six day race or something from yeah, memory. Right. And there's just a camel is the back marker. It's, the marker. And it's just walking. And if the camel gets in front of you, you're done. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so I was like, it must be pretty slow. Like, yeah. um, obviously, people are stopping, resting, and. Well, stuff yeah. like that. I suppose technically, you know, I stayed in front of the camel for three and a half years. <laughs> 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 so, so you didn't know how to butcher an animal at all, or you had some kind of butchering skills? Oh, look, I, I, I'd butcher the skills, like yeah, you know, like I wasn't that great at it. Um, but yeah, you start you start to pick it up pretty quick, smart. Yeah, like it's it's not too, especially I wasn't trying to butcher the whole entire animal. Mm. So I'm looking for the specific cuts of um, you know generally the uh, the back straps on there. And so it, you get pretty good at getting that out. But I was like, I, I want those ribs. I'm a bit of a fan I of love ribs, ribs, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to get into these ribs and I'm like, I can't get in. I'm going to stuff up my knives if I can't go through. I didn't have the skills. So yeah. I'm like, all right, if you don't have the skills, you know, get the tools. So yeah. I've got my chainsaw in, all right? <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, I, I chainsaw these ribs out. <laughs> And, it's like and, Fred Flintstone. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> that's exactly what it ended up yeah. like. So I have these Flintstone bloody ribs. Sick. Um, yeah, we, we, they weren't too bad, but, you know. Not uh, as were the they blood all over you. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> Ivan Malat cross chainsaw massacre. Some, yeah, chainsaw massacre. <laughs> just, oh. I, I, I did freak a few people out occasionally. So uh, we, well, I'm in this spot. So um, I'm through into WA and... Um, it's in between Jupiter Well and Coonawarrigi. So this is one of the longest stretches we did without water. Mm. So the camels didn't get a drink for nearly 450 kilometres on this stretch. Okay. So we're right in the middle of that. It's 30th of June. I'd saved a few beers for end of financial year. Yeah. It's an old habit. Couldn't kick it. So I'll like, I've got eight beers. Let's have a wrist yeah. order. So I'm doing that. And then this four-wheel drive and camper van 
Is that me? Yeah. And so this four-wheel driving camper van pulls up and they get out. They start asking questions about the uh, about the camel track. Yeah. And um, then all of a sudden they say, oh, there's another bull, uh, another camel that we saw just down the road, about a kilometre down the road. And I was like, was it heading this way? They're mm. like, yeah. I'm like, fuck, it's going to be a bull camel. We're going to get an attack. <laughs> so I don't say anything. I just say, oh, fuck. And then I run back to my camp, grab my rifle and start running straight back towards them. <laughs> So they've just seen this guy just randomly go, oh, fuck, grab a rifle and start sprinting straight towards him. So the look on her face just like drops, like, holy shit. So I run a little bit straight, a little bit past him and I nail this bull. It drops like 15 metres in front of us. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, we got, we got bull camel for dinner. Yeah. So you want to stick around? I'll throw a bit in the camp oven. She's like, oh, no, thank you. I've prepared tofu for us. Oh, <laughs> so, no. Oh, I've just down this bull camel in front of the vegan. And, <laughs> oh. Oh. I was going to say, I wonder what Tash Peterson would be <laughs> thinking of this. <laughs> oh. Jesus. That's gold. That yeah. is funny. Uh, I just think it's such a crazy thought. Like, if you hear of someone, you know, crossing Australia with camels, you don't think that they're coming under attack like fucking ISIS yeah. walking through the desert. You've got all these rogue ISIS camels just coming in, suicide bombing you. <laughs> you got to, like, defend yourself. It was one one day we had four bull camel attacks before lunch. What the fuck? Yeah, so uh, before, we were day in camp. It was an area that we had really good feed for the camels. So yeah. my camels aren't the only one that realised that. So the wild ones are coming in as well. Yeah. And by the third one, I was just – I didn't even get out of my chair. You're just like, oh, for fuck. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and I was a bit worried because the first one affected me so much and then by the time you get to 40 and you're just so blasé about it yeah. like, um, it's amazing how quick you just kind of adapt to that new way of life yeah. and people would come and join me on the trek for a little bit and just see how relaxed you were kind of doing these yeah. things and they're like Holy shit, man! Like you've changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. Changed the <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's what I was I was talking about this the other day. Oh, I can't remember who was on the pod, but I was talking about the first time I shot a kangaroo, and then the feeling of like guilt after and having to skin it and eat all the meat and stuff. Yeah, I I, I couldn't do it again after that. But out of necessity, like I would have had to continue to do it. I'm sure I would have become numb to it. it, and it would have become, yeah, it would have become quite a normal. Well, yeah, because the thing that brings up is like if I do nothing, uh, one of my boys probably dies. Mm. All right, mm. So that's a good motivation to address those things. So mm. you're addressing that. So I, it, it wasn't like I was like, oh, you know, I'd much rather fresh meat than the freeze dried food or mm. camp meals that I've got. It's you maybe know. you didn't give your boys a chance to do, to show their fucking skill. Maybe you had, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you had the UFC champion Chair, camel, yeah. you know, <laughs> ultimate fighting camel. No, <laughs> you don't was, even know. It was always the little fella Charlie, the half camel, right? Yeah, that just thought that he was the ducks nut. So he's tied up, but it's kind of like he's trying to go towards the bulls as yeah. they're coming. Hold me in. back! Hold me back! Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> Grabbed by the t-shirt. Oh, you're lucky! You're lucky! Classic tactic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Small man syndrome. Yeah. So, w- w- would the bull camel come in and kill? whoever is the dominant camel or they just come and try to take your pack over from you. Yeah, so generally they'll come in and try and kill the, the, the largest one or the one that will come out to address them. Okay. So, yeah, Who was your bull camel or your leader? So the, the one bull I had was the small one. Uh, right. The others were had all had their, their balls cut off. Right. Uh, so the biggest one I had a lot, oh, was Cam. Yeah. Uh, so he was my lead camel. Yep. Then we had uh, Jackson. Cam. 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 Yeah. Your boy. Cam, Cam the camel. <laughs> Scores Cam. the mention. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And then we had uh, Jackson, Arthur, uh, Ted, uh, and Bill the Bastard. Bill and, the he, Bastard. A, and you can specifically see the difference between them all? or Yeah, yeah. They've all got slightly different colours and, yeah. you, know, you know, slightly Look. different sizes. So you pick them up. It, take, it, doesn't, it only would take someone on the trek about, you know, five days, yeah. six days, and then they'd start to pick it pick up. Yeah. And they've all got different personalities. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and that's right. one of the things that would help people trying to pick it up. Yeah. You know? yeah oh, that bastard. That's Bill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. did you name them? Yeah, yeah. So I named them. Yeah. So Cam was named after the filmmaker. Cam, what? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we had Bill the bastard named after my grandfather, the yeah. bi- the Bill bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 and we had uh, Jackson after my son, Arthur, my father, uh, Ted after one of my mentors, nice. and Charlie. Like, well, when I first got after him, after the he big was night a, you had before you left, <laughs> close. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 He was a white camel. Oh. And oh. I call him cocaine. Yeah, yeah, nice. But then I did a, a visit to a school. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and I introduced the team and they, they, they shot daggers. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. So I changed his name to Charlie's, you know, a little yeah. bit more family That's friendly. That's brilliant. That's pretty funny. Fuck yeah. So, uh, did you say, uh, how old is your son? 
Uh, 17. Right. So, so he lives over in Liverpool in the UK. Okay, so, cool. Um, because of COVID, I didn't get to see him on the trip. He didn't get to join me on the trip. Yeah. So he comes over in a month's time and I get to see him for the Sick. for the first time in five years. Wow. wow. Yeah, That's so insane. really intense. That's, yeah. yeah, and oh, I mean, me being away from my daughter for five days or whatever it is because I'm separated. Yep. That's hard enough. Fucking yeah. Five years. Yeah, and he was all lined up to come over April 2020. You know, wow. and, you know, so everything was lined up. He was going to come out and spend a month on the trek and oh. it was right in the centre of the trek. He would trek. have ended up spending... Yeah, the whole time with the probably lockdown. wouldn't come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. we would have gone. All right, we're. I guess we're a yeah. camel person. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, uh, you didn't just have the camels. You had your dog. Yeah, old Brusky. 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 Who's, who's our first dog in the studio? Yeah. <laughs> come on, Brusky. Up. Oh. Oh, there he is. There he is. Come on. Can you Get him on up? the camera. Hey, up. buddy. Hey, mate. Oh, oh, you there you got to see him. Yeah. Yes. yeah good. There's hey, buddy. And he's, uh, he's a bit. Go. That's good. Thirty <laughs> percent dingo, seventy oh, percent. Oh, oh, good boy. <laughs> yeah, so uh, had him along the way. Got him uh, a couple of months before I started walking. So yeah, okay. nice. yeah the company of a dog's completely different. And to he's the just, he's just yeah. like, what the fuck did this can't get me for? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Dad, Tim, we're going to go walkies one day. <laughs> 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 Shit got intense. <laughs> Trekkies. <laughs> that's, when you cla- that's when you clap. He, oh, parking. sorry, yeah. buddy. He agrees. Yeah. He agrees. <laughs> so um, it's funny when um, uh, I d- it did the calculation for the amount of steps, I checked my iPhone. I only checked it in the last like week yeah. of the trek. I, I didn't really check my step counter. Yeah. So we added up all the, the annual averages and stuff like that, and it's like 26,117,000 steps. Yeah, no. Fuck. But that dog does twice the distance I do. Yeah. So I put a tracker on him and I did about 40 Ks one day. He nearly did 90. Because Why, of... He's wandering and sniffing and yeah, walking back and it, forth. Yeah, off chasing a lizard. And yeah. yeah. He walks a bit faster than we walk. We only walk about four and a half Ks an hour. So he's up and back and up and back and up and yeah. back. I was going to ask that. So you, you're walking on average about 40 Ks a day. Yeah. So we probably averaged uh, mid-30s or, or thereabouts. But then you go to somewhere like Tasmania where there's wineries all every, you know, 10 Ks. So you average about 10 well, So you <laughs> brought the camels over on a boat to Tasmania? Yeah, yeah. Hired a whole 40-foot stock crate and filled what? it with camels <laughs> and all the gear. That's incredible. All right. So the start of your trip was in Queensland. Yep. Can you tell me, though, I don't want to give away any trade secrets to anybody thinking of stealing camel breaking in business. What's the first step to breaking your camels in? I'm so intrigued by this, where you just learnt to tame them. Yeah. So after, so you get a get a halter onto them. Yeah. Uh, and a lead rope. Yeah. Uh, and the first thing you do is actually tie them to a post and ignore them. Wow. All right. So you only put about a, a, a meter between the, on the post to, to the, through the lead rope to them, yeah. and then you sit on the other side of the fence and you just ignore them. You read a book. Oh, chill out. Like Andrew Tate with his women. <laughs> 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 I'm not saying there's not similarities. <laughs> <laughs> It, maybe not the lead rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the halter. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so you, you wait until they've got three main, uh, as a wild camel, the three kind of feelings that they operate from. You've got fear, curiosity, and trust. Yeah. All right, so what you're trying to do is wait for the fear to drop down and the curiosity to rise up. Mm. So when that r- lead rope goes from taut to them coming up sniffing and being curious about you, yep. then you're ready to start <laughs> working with them. Okay. So the first thing you do is nothing and just wait for that. That curiosity to outweigh the fear. And how long's that? Did you say roughly? Oh, for, different for each camel. So yeah. like you, you could have it within fifteen minutes with one, and yeah. you could you could be waiting on that fence for two or three hours for another one. Yeah, right. Okay. So, and okay. and until you get that, you can't start. Okay. And yeah. when you start, you start feeding them or like. No. So the first thing you want to do is get a camel to sit down. So <laughs> a camel that can't <laughs> like sit down dog. can't do shit. Yeah, <laughs> sit. It's the first trick. Fuck it out. So, uh, again, there's different methods. Uh, so, you do this through a series of escalations. So, uh, we use a trust based training method. Yeah. Uh, so, it sounds pretty crazy, but the first thing you do is just literally ask it to hush. Right? Hush is the, uh, I think it's short for the Arabic word, nahushka or something like this, yeah. which is to sit down. So, they s- in Australia, we, most camel trainers still seem to use the word hush. Yeah. So, you just gently ask them to. <laughs> Right. Well, just hush and hope they understand and Arabic. Just hope. You never know. You never know, right? Maybe they saw someone else do it, you know? Maybe that's, maybe that's just a reminder that you've got to dare to dream, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. One Hail Mary. Yeah. Hush. Oh! Hush. Hey. He's like, here's good. Because fucking, <laughs> was it all camels originated from um, an Arabic country? I think they were saying they, they linked back to like this these camels that got loose and they all stem from that? 
Yeah, so that. in Australia, we uh, we imported our first camels. There was a couple uh, that came over, but then the first major import was for the Burke and Wills track. Okay. So they brought some over in there, and uh, that track was quite successful for the camels. Yeah. Not, not so much for the humans, but the camels yeah. nailed That's it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So then they started to realise the uh, the you did, yeah, how to utilise camels within Australia for yep. transport, exploration. Mm. And so camels were responsible for opening up most of central Australia. Okay. So they built the old Garn Railway... That they built the over, Overland Telegraph line, which wouldn't have been able to happen without the camels and the Afghan Cameleers, yeah. which was the first time they were ever able to communicate between Victoria, Sydney and the UK. Yeah, right. So that connected uh, you know, the ma- major cities of Australia with the rest of the world for the first ever time, thanks to camels. Wow. Ah. So we start to l- I started to learn all these things about camels yeah. there. So, so uh, you've got it to hush? Yep, we've got it to hush. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but it is, it's crazy. Like that, that was basically the truck of the outback. These guys, yeah, and right up until the 1930s, and the truck became the new truck of the outback. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Australian government goes, we don't need, we don't need any of the camels anymore. Immediately declared them a pest and told uh, all of the camel uh, handlers, shoot your camels. Yeah, right. And so the camel handlers are like, uh, fuck that. Yeah. Uh, so they shot a few for show, but all their favourites got smacked on the ass, sent out to Central Australia, yeah. and that. That's why we have the largest population of wild camels in the world. Wow. Today in Central Australia. Wow. It's so interesting. It's That's so cool. It's incredible. Shit about our own country. We don't even... Yeah, I've never seen yeah. a camel in the wild ever. Yeah. yeah. But... Obviously, I don't go out there, but yeah. that's, that's but, oh, it's the same as you two boys on the other side of the table. Yeah. Never seen a wild camel in the, in the wild before, yeah. and n- didn't know any yeah. of this stuff. Like yeah. this is all learned after I even started the, the walk. Like yeah. I, even during the training process, I didn't pick this up. Yeah. All this was stories shared with me on the walk. Yeah. Wow. Um, so. After you get it to sit, you you got to figure out how to jump on it. Is that scary for the first time? Because if they fucking kick you off, can they dip you off or headbutt you? Or? I only rode the camel three three times uh, during the training process. Ne- never did it again. Really? Yeah. I didn't want the temptation of having the option to ride. Yeah. Like, uh, I want to walk this. Okay, yeah. So if I start to get comfortable with that, uh, then... It, it's kind of like walk. It's kind of like running. In the, you mentioned you did a marathon over the weekend, like yeah. an ultra marathon, 100K. Yeah. Imagine if there was like someone driving behind you going, you yeah. sure you don't want to lift? <laughs> <laughs> you want to lift, mate? This is you want to lift? Yeah. We're all like going to the pub, man. Like, like <laughs> what are you doing this running shit for? Yeah. Fuck this is that. like Delby when we were running and training and he had the e-scooter and he just zoomed past me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sure? You just jump on. I was like, no, no. Oh, I have yeah. But yeah, I get it. I get that, it. That's I get like it. the opposite of a carrot in front. Yeah. You know, like it's a free ride behind. So I really wanted to walk it Yeah. by the end because I really fucking hate walking. So yeah. I'm like, well, I, I, I will take any other option. Right. So don't have another option. Fuck. It, so that's so interesting. You hate walking, so you decide to walk across Australia. Yeah. Yeah, right. Just yeah. because you, you're you like, I've, I can overcome this mentally or like... Uh, maybe I just don't like myself. I, I, <laughs> I, I bought shares in a nightclub and then didn't drink for the first year. So like, oh, I'm a what man of contradictions. It? What club was it? Uh, Lost Society. Okay, oh, sick. I used to go to that back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, fuck, wow. Okay. So, yeah, okay. So your choice to have the camels go with you was because you knew they could carry all your shit? Yeah, so uh, they're the ultimate vehicle to get anywhere. So they can carry the the ultimate beast of burden. They can carry so much weight. So my camels would carry on average about 200 kilos each. Wow. So So what what were you taking with you? So you could have everything. Yeah, whatever you want. I don't think I even own 200 kilos of stuff in my house. It is insane. Like, well, start as the water. That's it, you know, that's the first and foremost. So 320 litres, that's enough for like six weeks. Yeah, that's 320 kilos as well, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Plus all the equipment to carry that water. So it's more than 320. Because yeah. about 350 kilos. Yeah. So then I've got a few months worth of food. I carried a 35 litre Waco fridge. Yeah. At 100 <laughs> amp hour lithium battery, solar panels, fucking luxury. One KVA Yamaha <laughs> generator. I was going to ask if you would. It, so like, did you have entertainment? But obviously, if you've got this sort of stuff, you I had three speakers and a projector and a movie screen Sick. for movie night. So what do you like? Because <laughs> if because you, you're walking, how how long a day? Uh, so. Depends on, depends on where you are, but most of the central Australian stuff, which is I think where people are like, which is more authentic kind of camel trekking, mm. we're yeah. probably averaging high thirty. So I'm walking around about eight to ten hours a day. Mm. Um, so and it, what long did you? Like I just drove five hours to Albany, and I'm bored as fuck after two hours. Like what? Do you, like what do you do? You know, you know how like uh, sometimes on that drive, yeah. you're like where'd that last hour go? Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you anything about that drive. Yeah, mm. that would happen whilst you walk. Yeah, yeah. like you two or three hours could just disappear and you're like, I could not tell you about anything. 
yeah. around the area. Was it because they've got a trail of 85 dead bull camels? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's so like we, sleepwalking, the gun <laughs> just come out. Uh, <laughs> is it because it, it's such a barren like wasteland? Yeah. Is because you're not listening to like a podcast? You're not list, You're not entertaining is yourself? In any you're just literally just walking silent? What were, you, what were your methods? Yeah, so I'd, I'd listen to amazing podcasts probably like, like this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah probably every yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a full back catalogue, so yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a lifelong dream to yeah. finally make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna clip that, that up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So um, yeah, I yeah, you'd listen to a few podcasts. You'd um, I'd write a few notes as well. Yep. I, I'd start to write about the experience. Write a um, you know just notes on the phone. Yep. Uh, just like smash them out whilst I was going along. Yeah. There's a lot to kind of see. I, I hadn't been to any of the places that I walked through before. Yeah. Um, so mm. it, I never knew what was around the next corner. So that would keep you kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, you did have to keep a lookout for the bu- for the bulls, like yeah. then coming through. So that kind of keeps you on your toes because yeah. I I dropped the ball a few times, concentrating too much on the podcast and my notes, and the camels would start jumping around behind me. I'm like, fucking settle down, yeah. Mm. And then they start jumping around again. I turn around and see a bulls like actually attacking the back camel, mm. yeah. and I've just been in a yeah you know, in, in, in my zone. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, a couple of experiences like that, and you're like, all right, we've got to be a bit more aware. Mm. It's incredible just to think that like a, a bull just comes out of. Nowhere. Yeah, could it smell them or something or yeah, like? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, they smell them from a f- fair while away. Okay, and your headshots? Did you just have a shotgun, so it didn't matter where you hit, or were you like a no, rifle? A three hundred eight. So Seiko eighty five hundred three hundred eight, and you uh, aiming for the heart. Yeah. Uh, the heads when they're charging in, the heads running around everywhere. So the yep. head's going to be a hard shot, and you've got more chance of a ricochet off somewhere. Yeah. So if you're shooting for the heart, you're shooting for somewhere around the top legs. Yeah. Right, so you're trying to go just in just in front or just behind the the front yep. the front shoulder, um, and you've generally got a side profile kind of shot on there. Yep. So it's a nice easy, nice easy yeah okay, shot. Cool. And then if you if you slightly miss, you hit the top of the leg. At least you're going to slow slow the camel down before it hits. Yeah, it's yeah. yours. If you guys on the YouTube uh, ed- editing video clips, yeah, I'll send you a bull camel attack. You know, yeah, video. Yeah. That'd um, be sick. And this one here is uh, this was pretty crazy. Like. Uh, and it was lucky I had the filmmaker that was there at the time. I'm about 30 metres away from camp, and all of a sudden I hear the bull camel. It's like, all right, I've got to run back to camp, grab the gun, run to the edge of the sand dune, uh, take the first shot on the bull. Um, he st- I ended up downing this bull about 15 metres before, 10, 10 to 15 metres before the edge of my camels. Mm. Uh, and this is the one with the video. Uh, all that was 17 seconds. Wow. All right, so Fuck. from he- hearing, and this is any, it could be any time, there's no yeah. warning. It's just like, all right, you hear it, you got to get back to camp, take the first shot. Oh. Should you miss one or two of those shots, chances are he's in amongst yours. And as soon yeah. as he's in amongst yours, he's un- this is all happening 150 metres away. Yes. All right, as soon as he's in amongst yours, like, it might be an okay shot, but like, you don't want to get your own camera. You don't want to get your own. So, how yeah. has, did that happen? Uh, never, never got closer Lucky. than 10 metres. Because if it did, yeah. What, what do you do? You got to go in with a knife. You yeah, got to go cropped under you. You got to go get down there and get involved. Fucking hell! Like I had the knife on me, but you know you'd be hoping you'd be getting down trying to position with the gun. But like, yeah. like, fuck, that's intense. Yeah. Okay. And then so along the journey, we've obviously experienced some pretty like <clears throat> isolated areas. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how often you were by yourself, but like even just as something as simple as the night sky would have been uh, in- absolutely incredible. Incredible. Mm. I uh, I was sitting on the veranda here in Perth having a drink with someone, and I mentioned something about the stars, and they're like, "What? What stars?" I looked up, I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm not yeah. out there anymore, so yeah. I don't get to see that." But yeah, all the light pollution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You take a photo on your iPhone, and that's how it would come out out there. It was absolutely <sighs> insane. Yeah. This one night, I you know see this you know couple of satellites, and then a couple more, and then a couple more, and I'm like there's a whole traffic jam of satellites wow. going through the sky, and I'm like. It's gone on like 50 or 60 in a row. Yeah. Elon Musk. Yeah, well, I didn't know that out there. Like, it's amazing how often you'd pull your phone out and straight to Google and all the answers are there. Yeah. I, I, I pull my phone out straight to my notes. Like, I fucking got to find out what that Google, whatever the hell that was, yeah. like, later on down the track. Yeah. No, like, fucking zero reception, right? Yeah, zero. Like, for, it was one patch for seven weeks. Yeah, like right. Even all my Spotify and everything shut itself after 30 days. Yeah. So wow. now you're like, all right, there's now, we've lost music. Nothing to watch. It's oh. like, all right, we're we're lost in our own head now. It's right. Yeah. So th- that's what I'm yeah. interested in. What was we're that like? Because like? this is this is getting back to almost the ba- like the basics of a, pr- a primitive man when there's nothing. Yeah. And you've got what do you do? Yeah. You've got nothing. You've Are got you facing th- demons? Are you having thoughts about 
childhood, life, regrets. It's it's like the thought gets to go to its uh, its end degree. So like uh, previously, like I think we get caught in the uh, competitive and comparative mindset. Mm. So all of our thoughts run through that filter of, but what are someone else doing? What does someone else have? You know, what would someone else think if mm-hmm. I did this? So because I hadn't been scrolling through Instagram, I hadn't been, you know, mindlessly kind of, you know, absorbing all of that. Yeah. And I hadn't had interactions with other people for, for a fair amount of time. Mm. Uh, that competitive and comparative filter had started to, to drop down. So I kind of felt for the first time I was having some genuine thoughts. Yeah. Um, and wow. I was getting to run them through to the end of what that genuine thought should be. So oh. there is... There is no escape from it out there. Like if uh, if something comes to your table or to the front of your mind, you're like, "All right, here we go. Strap let's, in. Get, let's get through this. Strap yeah. in. We're in yeah. for a few. We got it. We got plenty of time yeah. <laughs> to unravel it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So that was that was really interesting to go there. And it, you'd be surprised with some of the things that would come up because you're like, you know, th- there's not that filter there. So you, whatever comes up, you're like, "All right, well, we've got the time. Let's let's run through oh, it." Cool. So I think some of those times where I was talking about where the the couple of hours would just disappear on the walk. Mm. Like uh, that's that's where I am mm. when it disappears, and that's why I can't tell you anything about that particular yeah. patch of land that I went through. And then because there's no foreseeable end, because at the even like you get to the end of the day, you've got a task, you know, set up camp, I guess, and then once you've eaten, then you, what are you like? What are you doing? Right, <laughs> you you're, know? you're out. Straight like, away. I mean, you look at that. Like you're up with the sun, all right? And you, I've got 1.1 ton of gear. Yeah. All right. So you're you're getting that 1.1 a ton of gear onto those camels before you, you start your day, and then you're walking for eight to ten hours. All right. It's another hour and hour and a half to set up your camp, so set up the fence anyway. for the camel, and then you start dinner. Mm. All right. And that's that's an hour to prepare and then pack away, and because you're travelling every single day, or well, nearly every single day, six or days a week, everything has to be packed up. Yeah, you know, every single day perfectly as well. So you get to the end of that day, it's fifteen hours, fourteen hours. Yeah. That's you it. You you hit the you hit the pillow. And <laughs> you've got no timeline with this, do you? You're not like I need to get here by this date. It's just like wherever the wind blows, however I'm feeling. Yeah, which is uh, like I confuse myself sometimes why I would walk so much or do that. But uh, at certain points, you've got to hit a water point. You mm. know, like there is like that next water hole is. 80 k's away, all right, so let's, we can do it in four days or we can do two really intense days and sit on that water hole for the day. Mm. Now, did you know where these were because each town would tell you? Did you get um, knowledge from Aboriginal people? Did you have 100%. a map? Yeah. 100%. So local knowledge was like an absolute key. So yeah. I wouldn't plan too far ahead because uh, I can look at a map until I'm blue in the face. Mm. But local knowledge is absolutely imperative to... Yeah find out what water hole actually has water, what's good, what's bad, you know, yeah. what's, what, what's a good way or a bad way. So um, the Aboriginal communities along the way were also pretty integral with that. Yeah. Um, oh, that and that would have been really almost very interesting and eye-opening to learn f- from them, I guess, the, yeah. the, the uh, living off the land. 100%. I've never, I've never spent any time out with an Aboriginal community before until I started this trek. So yeah. I, I was really happy with how well I was embraced by yeah. By all the people, all the communities along the way, especially the Aboriginal communities. So all the kids would come out, you know, when you roll into a town, you just smothered. All, yeah. all the kids are just running all over you. Yeah. Um, and then so once that would settle down, then the adults would come out and start asking the questions. And because everyone's coming out to you, then it's you feel yeah. quite comfortable going, all right, well, tell me about yeah. Tell me about the place. Tell I me what's happening like around you. I was wondering that if it would be closely guarded secrets, like we don't want you... Mm. taking our resource or yeah so like uh, my my experience got much better after i went to kunawaraji so that same camp where i uh, ran at the vegans with the gun yeah (laughs) um that's a weird sound bite if you pull that one (laughs) 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 just be careful on your editing (laughs) be good to me yeah um so anyway vegans gun um yeah, so I found a uh, spear, and a, quite an old spear in, in one of the bushes there. So I next Aboriginal community I go to, a couple hundred k's down, I present the spear to them and say, you know, re-gift it. It wasn't really gifting, it was yeah. uh, returning. Mm. Um, so I did that and then they offered it back to me and I refused and said, no, I've you know, brought, brought this back to you. So um, after that, uh, I got taken into the secret men's business uh, area of the community yeah, and okay. sat down with a guy named Chris at the community who 
took uh, one of the elders who took me through um, it, a, a bit of explanation about the area, about their history, um, took me through some prints and tracking methods, um, and I spent the rest of the day uh, with him there. That yeah. there, like, very, that, I don't know what the word, it makes me, it appeals to me yeah. immensely, learning that stuff, the that, the... Cam McLaren's often said it, uh, and he said it on the podcast once, you know, we're always trying to go back to almost, it's almost like technology's going so far, we almost have to go back to the the old ways. And yeah. that just seems so, like, yeah, entertaining almost, you know, to learn that sort of stuff. A hundred percent. And it's like, uh, it's so good to be connected with some knowledge about where we came from, mm. yeah. you know, from previous generations. Mm. You know, we used to be so connected with this knowledge and now we like... Once you get out there and realise how much you don't know, you you are there's very disconnected. Most of the, uh, my idea with camping of camping before this mm. was like most Australian blokes. It's yeah. like grab a ute or a four wheel drive, fill it with beer and bacon, um, throw a couple of fishing rods on that may get thrown in, and just sit somewhere for a week yeah. and just sink cans with the boys and kick the footy around. Like that yeah. was that was my experience of outback Australia before this. Yeah. So my brother who's listening will be like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, are, yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so it was good to have the you know go out there and actually see what outback Australia was yeah. actually like. What what was the significance of the spear? Was it well? So they it they reckon it was around about an eighty two hundred year old spear, probably from the Puntibi people, yeah. and the Puntibi were the last uh, Aboriginal people to come out back out from the the desert. Yep. Yeah. Um, so they were the last traditional living uh, Aboriginals in Australia wow. uh, that that. that came out i think in the 70s mm. so it was probably one of their spears so it could be anywhere from the 50s uh, or, or prior they reckon right. how do you how do you stumble across that like mm. so the camels had eaten around this bush and they'd eaten a fair bit into it and mm. there was a it's like me on a saturday sort of night after night clubs <laughs> 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 there was a lamb sandwich <laughs> yeah yeah so they it, it had left this bit of wood that you could you, see, you could see it wasn't meant to be there yeah so uh yeah went up and pulled it out of the bush and that's what it was. Yeah, right. and, and that changed my experience with the Aboriginal communities. It, it took it to another level. All Is that sudden, because you didn't accept it as a gift? I think it's just because I returned it. Yeah, okay. All right, so they felt co- more comfortable with me going to places and, and guiding me through certain places because, you know, I'm probably not going to souvenir or something if I find it. Yeah. You know, there's a respect for, the, you know, not just the land but their, yeah. their you know, their yeah, things yeah, that are on yeah. it. And did they... Tr- like relay that message that hey there's a white fella coming oh yeah he's done this for us so the next community i went through they came out and found us they brought out fresh fruit and vegetables which is great i hadn't had fresh fruit and veggies for for ages what? and even as far down as mika thara 1400 kilometers away someone drives past me beeps their horn chris from Kodawaji says hi <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, that's so the message had spread like wow. incredible yeah that's incredible how that happens yeah that's awesome yeah so um where you um started was queensland did you go um south to Tassie, then up and around, or just straight through the middle, or what was the path? Yeah, so originally the, the aim was to walk straight across. Mm. So I started, and it was going to be about a 4,600 kilometre trip mm. to go from one side of Australia to the other. Mm-hmm. I started walking, and I was only a few hundred k's in, and I'm like, this <laughs> this is a unique way of coming. This is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I pulled up this intersection, and it was just like, all right, straight or left, and I decided to go left, start heading south instead. Yeah. So... This was around about May, and my um, family is live. Uh, a bunch of my sisters live in Canberra. Yep. And I was like, I reckon I can make that for Christmas. So yep. my first deviation was let's train the tr- change the track and head towards Canberra for Christmas. Yep. Yeah. So I got to Canberra for Christmas. All good. You know, I won Christmas that year. I'm like, I walked up on camels. I like, walked here. Would you? You <laughs> flew yeah, you here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> full three <laughs> wise men. <laughs> <laughs> So I went Where did you park the camels in Canberra? Oh, what, one night I went straight up Parliament House lawn and just camped on Parliament House lawn. Fuck right, off. Right out the front. <laughs> That's so cool. So I'll, give you, I'll get you a photo of that as well. Um, so yeah. <laughs> what did they say? Were they like... That's the greatest. There's, yeah, there's yeah. a law about this. No, the AFP were coming out and they were taking photos of... Me and the politicians, and so Polly's came out, get some photos. Yeah, right. So well, it's such no an incredible anything. journey. They're pro- yeah, probably excited by it, if anything. I'm not sure if I can get in trouble for this, but I did camp out in front of Parliament House with a 308. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and about, wow. Allegedly. At <laughs> about 1,200 rounds. And, but, but, but the, <laughs> 
You could have solved a few problems for us. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they legalise weed very soon. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny, they, they come up and there's a few of the press around and stuff like that and they're, they're like, oh, you, you must have a message. What have you come up for? And I was like... Oh, Jesus. You know, what do you want to say to... You know? And I was just like, oh, you know, you're doing a good job. <laughs> like, you know, like, place, place seems like it's running pretty good. <laughs> I, I was the grass gonna, is I pretty was, soft. I was gonna head off now. Yeah. You know? It's like Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> I, I might go home now. Yeah. <laughs> wow, full full camel train at Christmas. Yeah. So What's your message? Hey, well, uh, gave it up, boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we ended wow. up. Uh, we leave Christmas. We leave uh, Canberra, and um, and we run straight into the bushfires. Oh wow! Yeah. So is, this, is the Sydney ones? Yeah. At that yeah. Time? So yep. yeah, New South Wales. Black. Yeah. Black. black. Sunday or oh, whatever they called it? Black fucking everything, everything. it was, yeah. mate. Yeah. It was insane down there. So um, it, I had two options for the way I was going to go out of Canberra. One was going down closer to the coast, all right, and the other way was to go through Brindabella towards Tumut, so up into the high country. Okay. Mm. So I opted for high country. Had I gone the other way with the way the bushfires came through, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah, I'd right. I would have been trapped between some of that mountainous country and the coast, mm. and I would have just got fried. Yeah. I would have just been on logging track. So yeah. the way that I went... Um, and the fire got within five k's with us. Fuck, that's a, so close. It was hairy. Yeah, it was a hairy few days, and, and I uh, managed to outrun and out uh, with the help of some locals in Brindabella. Yeah, uh, come up with a plan to skirt along the side of the fire once the wind changed for a hundred k's. Fucking hell! And on the second day of that, I get gastro. Oh no! Oh, so I am <sighs> erupting from everywhere. I was going to say, would you have gotten sick a few times, like eating the wrong things? Like li- if you're living off the land, li- eating camel, stuff like Never that. Never got sick once outside of that day. Yeah, right. Okay. right. So Mavis's beef, cheese and pickle sandwich that she made for the fucking fireys <laughs> took, me out, <laughs> took me out hard. <laughs> <laughs> so hard. So well, would the rest of it be like not processed food, not like uh, just yeah, real like what what you can get off the land and stuff, or would, I, I, do, you, do you stop by a local IJ like in a town? Army, army oh, you, you food. take whatever you can get. It's not fussy. Like, I mean, I, I had more roadkill than I'd care to admit. Yeah, uh, right. really. Yeah, yeah, fair bit of roadkill. So again, what was the most exotic? Mainly kangaroo. Would it be echidna? Yeah? Oh, yeah. How'd that go? It was good. Really? <laughs> like, really good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a sweeter version of pork. Really? Amazing. And you got toothpicks for after as well. I'm interested, like, are you allowed to eat a kid? Are you allowed? Like, if it's already you, dead. Yeah, oh. well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, if you're not, if you're not allowed to, then... then oh, no, that was a joke. Was a <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, in other news... There's a new business that we're starting is uh, echidna meat farming. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So you would have had echidna kangaroo koala? Uh, no, 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 no. No, so uh, echidna kangaroo, um, uh, wallaby. Uh, so we had bungo or a yeah, tree Yeah, they're owner. meant to be beautiful. What about cows really and nice. sheep? Like you'd come across a few of them, would you? Or so or if you care where you come into you, a few. <laughs> when you're going through station country, generally whatever meat the station is farming, um, you know, you'll leave with a fridge full yeah. of, of that from every second or third kind of station. You'd pick it off or they'd gift you? Or no, they'd, they'd just gift it to you. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, but a, a station owner may have a massive station, but he knows everything that's happening. It's everywhere crazy. you've been on that station. Yeah, yeah. How? Right, you, can, you can't get away with much on a station. You might go, oh, this, this thing here is like, uh, half the size of France. Yeah. yeah. And then he'd be like, oh, so I saw you camped by, you know, Widgie Boar uh, the other night. And yeah. Like, How? What, know? drones or? No idea, mate. No idea. Fuck. That's uh, Cause you, spidey you, senses, mate. Yeah. I was going to say, you'd see cars and st- or hear cars. Well, they're pretty good at tracking. So, you know, uh, camels, you know, even in areas where there were, were camels, all right, my camels are all walking pretty much in a straight line. So mm. it leaves a different kind of print and there's yep. the occasional... Yeah. Footprint and a dog print right next to it. They yeah. can pick it. They can pick it up pretty quick. Yeah. Were, were you w- sticking to roads, or would you just go like bit hit and miss down the east coast? There was a lot of lot of roads, or just off to the side of the roads. Yeah. Um, and Tasmania, there was a lot of straight out on the road, not mm. even off the side of it. So you're on that, and we did a bit of horse trailing to work mm. back up. Uh, once you get out to central Australia, you're on yeah, you're on bush tracks. Yeah. You're you're just like I'm going roads. west. Sometimes you just point a yeah point a, point a direction away you go. There's no fences, so yeah. mm. there's, there's no role. And uh, that bungalow is that that's that lizard. I had uh, my Aboriginal kids that are from up north that would that I taught at Ellenbrook would not stop talking about how good it was. Oh, it's so good. I reckon it was the best. Oh, and also uh, the bush turkey, yeah, the yeah, Australian right. busted. It was pretty nice. Yeah. So I, I got some of that 
uh, given to us. Um, so the boys had had a bit of a hunt, so they gave us gave us a little bit of because um, you're not allowed to get it yourself. Yep. So it was, defi- it was definitely gifted. Gi- yeah, gifted. Yep. Uh, but they also gave us some potatoes and some other bits. This is a couple of the yep. Matu guys that had uh, brought out some of the fresh fruit and veg. Yep. So I'm like, I've got Nando spice rub. I can have chicken and chips. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had that shit for ages. I love my Nando's. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, oh, that'd I, be I, a just such a, such a delicacy, wouldn't yeah. it? You just yeah. oh, so I even had the Perrinets. Yeah, like, you know, square. Yeah. I was like, I'm in heaven. <laughs> Fuck. So I'm out in a place called Derby Springs, middle of the Canning Stock Road. I'm definitely the first person to have Nando's out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so good. Um, without giving too much away, things that you were um, shown or told in secret men's business are, is that stuff that you're supposed to keep to yourself and not share with anyone, or was it pretty much like, hey, we can teach you this, this, and this? And yeah, I think most most of the stuff I learned were able to be shared. Yep. You know, a lot of it was about uh, you know how they. Um, um, interact with the other communities yep. uh, that are around, not now, but back in the day. Yep. Um, so a lot of the uh, communication lines between them yep. um, and how they also um, manage to keep the bloodlines kind of... How, uh, would, how would they communicate? Smoke? Oh, no, so that it, it, when they're travelling from place to place, so uh, Kuna Waraju was one of the major kind of meeting points. So oh, there the would be place from the others that would come in and out. So even though the languages might be uh, varied, they'd be similar from place to place and mm. they could pass, you know, messages through. Like Google Translate from each point. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, he was, so he was trying, as he was explaining this, he's, he's showing you showing on the ground, you know, and explaining this is this place, this is this place. So when you, you start to see a bit of artwork after that, you start yeah. to say, all oh, right, I, I start to understand the artwork yeah. a little bit more now. It's more Still maps. very much a novice, yeah. but it was just so good to have a little glimpse into that world. Mm. Yeah. So I think the secret stuff is when they start to take you through law. So yep. when you go through law, that's when, you know, you, your rite of passage process as, yep. a, as a man or as an outsider that's accepted in. Yeah. Mm. Um, so maybe if I return and spend some more time, it might be something something I might have the privilege of experiencing. Is that uh, something that you'd want to do in the future? Or yeah. You, yeah. 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 I, th- I think, uh, you know, uh, spending uh, time out there, it's like you've opened a can of worms. It's very hard to put the lid back on. Yeah, right. Um, I don't think it would be too long, me being back in the city where I start to... Yeah, go a bit stir crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they, right. just, they just take you away. Like, the, take you, take the <coughs> the the boys trans- yep. going into a manhood. They just yep. take them away. Like, the, I remember doing a bit of work up in the Kimberley with some uh, remote communities, yep, and there were kids. They're like, yeah, they're they're off doing their um, yep, their induction or I can't remember what the word was, and yep. yeah, they just take them away. They'd have a job at the local bloody uh, IGA or whatever was there, and they just the the local communities just had to deal with the fact that they weren't going to be there, and then mm. four months later they could come back and yeah, they got to give them their job back and yeah, right, yeah, they sort of work with that because it's yep. such a strong. <laughs> A tradition, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I think it also it, it really uh, strongly connects the the kids at a young age to to the land yeah. uh, around, which I think is a big part of the aim to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, uh, Brad Tripchev, I can't remember if you know him, but he was the one who sort of looked after us up there. He said, even the uh, the wives and the and the daughters, they would go out to wherever they were sort of camping and doing all their stuff, and they'd take them food, and they um, yeah, it was such a whole community thing. It wasn't yep. just them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, indeed. And then the women also have their secret women's business area. Yeah. So, you know, you go into the communities and it's uh, one of the first things you learn about when you go into the communities is like, this is the woman's business area. That's the men's business area. Yeah. You know, don't go into any of those, you know, whilst you're here. And, and some of the directions that I'd be getting from the communities as I'm going out is, oh, look, we just prefer if you stay away from here, this is the woman's, especially being a man, like, you know, just don't go left of the road. For the next hundred k's, yeah, right. and then you'll be safe. Then you won't, you know, stumble into any woman. Oh, could you imagine area. a woke fucking person travelling? But I identify as a woman. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, part of me would love to learn these sorts of things, but also part of me thinks like, fuck. Yeah, it's it's that's the whole beauty of it is that we don't know it, and it's yeah, there. some it's of it's not wisdom. for us. Yeah, either. it's their ancient you know? wisdom. It's their it's their privilege. Yeah, yeah my brother. Did you come <laughs> across any um, with, like experiences? So my brother had. Uh, he works um, for DBP, um, Gas Pipeline, and he said that there's um, a local guy that shows them where they can and can't go, and he was sleeping in the back, and then woke up completely randomly at this spot, and he's like, oh, yeah, here we're not allowed to go. Like, he was sleeping, woke up, and when they looked on the map, it was all the map that had been 
like marked off as like you can't go in there and he just had this sense where he woke up out of nowhere my brother's like what the fuck like no phones no nothing just woke up he goes yeah no nah, can't be going here take this side and went back to sleep wow. and, and, but, you but, see any of that sort of but but if you if you're if, if from a very young age you've just been dumped out in certain areas mm. all right and you know had that intense connection with that patch of land yeah. and then you've wandered it a bit and you're constantly driving between communities yeah 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 you know that whole entire country like the back of your hand. Yeah. The exact same way I was saying with the station owners. Yeah. That just know every single part. Like, yeah. it, you know, could we go, oh, I'll just get five minutes of sleep and then we should be round about there. Yeah. You know, like, you <laughs> yeah. know, like, no, no point waiting. So they, they'd just be so intensely connected yeah. with every part of the land that I think that, that just sounds completely normal yeah. for out there. Did you come across any, like, um, ancient sort of cave paintings or artefacts or anything, or was it...? Yeah, plenty, plenty of yeah, that right. kind of stuff out there. So there's a lot of artwork. So in Western Australia, we've got uh, the biggest instalment of uh, uh, artwork, uh, Aboriginal artwork, is a place called Walga Rock. Yeah. Um, and it's on the second um, largest rock, like kind of like Uluru. Yeah. Um, it's an amazing place if you get the chance to go out there yeah. and see it. But mm. there's a really cool painting that they have in there as well, and it's of a white sail ship. Wow. So this is about 400 kilometres inland. Wow. Uh, and there's a white sail ship with some funny kind of markings underneath that they haven't really been able to figure out, like, Fuck. who did. You know, one of the theories is that maybe it was one of the survivors from the Batavia, yeah. uh, from the Dutch shipwreck, you know, yeah. where, uh, uh, I think... Was it Batavia? Would have yeah. Yeah, yeah, the one that mu- one. Yeah, yeah, the one that mutinied and, yeah. you know, like... Uh, it, it's a fair way in. There's a couple a couple of guys that kind of stuck behind with the uh, with the local Aboriginal c- yeah. uh, communities back then, but apparently was well-travelled and yeah, well-accepted right. in there. So did he just go up there and go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this. You know, uh, in 200 was, years' time, there's going to be one of just being blown up with a Rio Tinto logo on it. I've seen recently, so with some new... Um, oil rigs and stuff that they're thinking of getting involved in it's not just the pollution and stuff that it's causing it it can cause in certain aspects acid rain which then will wear away wear away the out the artwork itself which so it's not acid rain is a naturally occurring thing but whenever there's factories around it just in the carbon dioxide the the process that it goes through yeah turns into carbonic acid and that will slowly and a lot of those paintings used to get touched up all the time like so you know they haven't really been touched up now because obviously they, they, no, no one no one kind of goes in there. So I think preservation would be a hard kind of yeah. thing to go mm. because it might be thousands of years old, but it's been touched up every hundred years, yeah. you know, previously yeah. uh, up until a couple hundred years ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah true, true. You know, so now we're in that process of, you know, deterioration. So yeah. how, how do they address it? It's yeah. What, um... What was so? We're kind of we, we love a good conspiracy and or a UFO story. This is exactly yeah. what I was just going to yeah. ask. So you're in the middle of nowhere. Any any phenomenon or any experiences that you can't explain or anything weird that happened out there? I was waiting for it. Yeah, right. <laughs> please. Yeah. No, no. Look, there, there there wasn't too much. There wasn't too much. But there was this. There was this one time I was in a shearing, an old abandoned kind of shearing shed down in. Uh, oh, that's called Tasmania. a Kiwi brothel, I think. <laughs> 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 they would never leave it abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good for business, ready for business, <laughs> with a line out the door. <laughs> um, anyway, oh, that's great. Uh, so uh, yeah, we, 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 I'm staying in there, and uh, I go across the road, and there's a, a house across the road, and I say, "Oh, look, do you have a PowerPoint that I could borrow? I want to charge." couple of things up because my battery was a bit bit kaput mm. so um he goes yeah no dramas he's where are you staying it's like in that shearing shed across the road he's like oh yeah, you're going really you know, like, oh, what do you mean yeah. it's like look i'm third generation here uh, we haven't used that for years and as kids we used to play there but we, we would never go there after dark but there's some strange shit that's happened in that shed oh, like fuck yeah. and i was like oh it's local bullshit <laughs> yeah you know, like whatever so i had a friend with us I go to sleep, she's still up. All of a sudden she's like, the door just opens, right? And then she can't see anything, but she just hears the footsteps no. right, coming in. Yes. The dog immediately goes up and is like, what is that? Yeah. The dog goes off in the direction, follows the footsteps. Yeah. No. Right? So she's like, it's not just me, yeah. this is a thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, about like a minute later, the dog's gone, a minute later... He just runs back straight to her swag and just like jumps in, into her swag, just Whoa. shaking. 
All right. Fuck. Yeah. Frosky. Yeah. So <laughs> he, he, whatever it was, he, 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 he copped the full experience. Wow. I'm gonna, so yeah. I wake up in the morning and uh, she tells me this story and I'm like, this is funny because I heard something else this afternoon and once I connected, she's like, you know, I'm, we are out of here. Yeah. So uh, she, she ended up le- leaving. So uh, you didn't tell her that the fella said not to stay in it? Uh, no, I, I, I told her the next day. Yeah. Uh, she tells me <laughs> yeah. this. And she, she actually ended up leaving uh, that, the next day and so I, was, I spent three nights in there by myself just, <sighs> just waiting for something to, like, come on. <laughs> oh, so you didn't get to... Ex- uh, uh, so I didn't get to, yeah, so I didn't get to see it. That's so pretty cool. I was ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> I was ripped off. And then uh, the light sky, the night sky, obviously you see, you probably see a lot more satellites, shooting stars, all of that stuff, but yeah, nothing no, I'd, I'd always ominous. look out for the International Space Station because, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was generally the, the closest human being to me. Mm. Right, so wow. uh, every time That's that flies over my head, it's just like, hey. Yeah. You know? It's incredible to think that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, any time, I think it's about 190 Ks up, so any time you're more than 190 Ks from another human, then yeah. you're like, that's, that's pretty cool. Closest. That's yeah. pretty cool. Wow. Because um, it's just a speck. Of, it's like a, a moving light. Yeah. Or could you, can you see it a little more clear? No, you wouldn't be able to see it more clearly. No, no, no. You just generally got a, a longer vision on it, so you can yeah. see, you know, see it earlier and later. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, the stars out there were absolutely incredible. So it, sometimes you'd uh, see noise pollution from up to, like, 300 kilometres, 400 kilometres away. Really? So you could start to see, oh, right, I can start to see this. There's a town over There's there. There's someone over there. Wow. Wow. And wow. Way away. Maybe those three or four hours that just went missing was aliens, man. <laughs> Maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, but I, look, I, the thing is, like, you're out there and you're completely like, no one else is, no one else is around. Yeah, you'd have no interaction with someone, and and the thought crosses your mind. We could make up some bullshit. That <laughs> like, like, they're, they're, we are not going to get checked on yeah. this. Like, no yeah. one's checking our homework. Like, yeah. yeah. But I was like, oh, as soon as you start to do that, then some of the actual really crazy shit that happened on the trek, yeah. or, or the, everyone's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, he would, knows how to spin a fucking yeah. gun. Because you know? there must have been some, some hair-raising experiences, like even like uh, – Death defying yeah, moments with snakes, like uh, d- oh, dangerous yeah. animals, and yeah. even fall, like cliffs. I don't know what you were. What were yeah, you were. We, we, had, we had the fall off the cliff. So, um, oh, fuck. Uh, so, me and uh, three camels ended up going over. So, this all happened in Jamison, Victoria. So, we disappear into the high country because this thing called COVID had just hit. And I was mm. like, oh, I've gone to the high country for a few months, just like disappear, I'll pop yeah. out the other side, it'll all be over. Mm. So I head off up there and a local had told me, getting that local knowledge, um, you go down these little tracks here, you've got these bridle trails and you can see a couple of the old mining huts and stuff like that up in the high country. Yeah. Like, Sounds great. So I head down there and I'm like, this is not a good track <coughs> for a two metre wide, 15 metre long camel train to be <laughs> on. Like, it, we, we're talking like sharp drop off straight down to like a, uh, the Jamison River. Yeah. And, and, and occasionally as we're walking, the track is so tight, it bumps the saddlebags yeah, of my right. camels and, and they step out towards the edge. I'm like, but we can't turn around. Yeah, so fuck. I get to this hut. I'm like, I'll just make it to that hut and we'll leave tomorrow, all right? We'll turn out, we'll go straight back on the track we came in. Mm. Yeah. We'll be right. So that night, uh, it start, starts raining and we get rain for two or three days straight. Fuck. 190 mils of rain. Jesus. Dumps in 48 hours. Fuck. All right? So anyway, we have to wait a little bit to, to kind of turn around and get out. But now the whole country's changed, mm. right? So camels were a soft-footed animal, not that sturdy on the feet, and now it's just a whole mud wash. Fuck. So we've got that same tight track, now it's slippery. So load them all up, we start heading out, and there's a section of track where there's this waterfall going across it. So I'm like, can't stop, can't turn around, just fucking head down and just push forward. So I do that, and then I hear, I hear a noise from back in the camel train. I'm like, fuck. I turn around... Yeah. The track has given away underneath the third camel. Fuck. And he's now fucking just dangling about 30, 30 metres up like uh. it, before this like straight drop down. So he's dangling down. I'm like, oh, we're going to lose the whole camel train here. All right? um, you know how I said I wouldn't hesitate whatsoever yeah. um, to On eat Arthur. Arthur? Yeah. Arthur's dangling, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> zero hesitation. Yeah. <laughs> boom, boom. All right, so I cut him out of the line, big knife. Uh, but as soon as I cut him out of the line... Um, I was actually, you know, Jess, but like, um, 
Oh, I thought I was sending this guy to, you know, this camel, like, this is it. He's, yeah. He's, he's gone. But I'm on the outside, so I'm the first one off. Yeah. So I fall about 20 metres or so before I start to get slowed down and caught well, up so in the blackberries. you cut that and that's made you fall. So uh, he's the third camel in the line. Yeah. So I've dropped that lead rope yep. on around the edge on yep. the side. Yeah. Right, and the lead rope connects the lead rope connects um, the back camel and the front camel via the neck uh, yep. to each other. So I can cut both ropes at the same time. Yeah. So he's just kind of dangling off. I've got the knife in, cut, and then we're both. He's, he's him and I are free. So we've both gone down. Wow. So I've gone about the twenty meters, and the first thing that happens is the camel hits me. So oh, Arthur fuck. hits me, and then keeps going, and I'm looking down at at Arthur, and he's just rolling over and over and 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 I, I you know, mate, that river is just absolutely flying like all that rain that's come through yeah, in the yeah, valley yeah. it's kind of built it up yeah so it's and flying. I thought my mate's fucking dead you know yeah, yeah. about 10 metres before he hits a uh, hits a tree yeah it stops I'm like fuck I can get down to him like I can might be able to get him out of there so I start getting out of the uh Getting out of the uh, the blackberries, Rusky's the only fucking idiot who <laughs> jumped off voluntarily. So he's <laughs> trying to follow face. you down. Yeah. <laughs> so I get down to him, cut all the gear off. Fucking stands up. I'm like, oh, I thought his legs are going to be busted. Yeah, he yeah. was rolling over and over. So he, um, I start anchoring him tree to tree and digging these goat tracks to try and get him out sideways because we can't go straight back up. Mm. Yeah. So about two meters, I can walk at a time to get him to the next tree, tie him up. And start digging the next track. So an hour and a half of that. And what are the other boys doing? Just waiting for two you. Two lots of two. Just walking that track, mate. I've got no idea. I can't see him. I've got oh, no fuck. idea. So I get him to a secure spot. And then I head back up on the track. I see Bill the Bastard and Charlie. They're just waiting there. Tie them up. Great. I keep going around the corner. And then I see two more camels off the side. And I'm mm. like, fuck. Now I've got three camels down. So they tried to turn around on the track. Mm. Yeah. And then gone off. So that's when I hit the emergency button on the, on my Garmin SOS. So I hit the SOS feature. Luckily, I can also text from that device as well. So I can text with emergency services because they don't generally come <coughs> prepped for camel rescue. Yeah. You know? So Is that so a satellite phone or something? Yeah, it's like it's a satellite device, but mm. it doesn't call, but you can text. Yeah. So it's quite a slow process to text because it's a directional bloody keypad where you've got to, like, oh. select each letter, you know, yeah. like... So you're trying to do that whilst you're trying to sort of see. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I, was, I was getting so frustrated with that <laughs> fucking device. So like, Surely in 2020, like yeah, I'm like just yeah. give me a fucking keypad. Yeah. You know? But um, so I, it takes me about another hour or so to get them just standing. But I still can't. There's still a ways down, so I can't get them up without winches or pulleys or something like this. So yeah, okay. another few hours to wait for the rescue services. By the time we get all these camels and everything back up on the side, it's dark. So I've, I've got to load them up. And finish off the last four Ks in, in pitch black. So, so the the emergency services, wow. well, the emergency yeah. services came. Yeah, with a winch. They came with similar gear that they'd use to recover a vehicle, mm. but they had to bring in whatever they brought o- on foot. Mm. So we're about five kilometres from the track. So they drove as far as they could to the to the main road or to the track, and then walked the, all this rescue gear in. So yeah, we're usually right. made in ma- manual kind of pulley systems and just getting men behind the camels and push, wow. pushing them back up. Could, were you able to get up or did they have to come to you and save you as well? No, I was I was up and jumping between okay. everything, trying to help them coordinate it yeah. all. Yeah. So, yeah, it was um, that all, all up, that rescue was about nine hours. Yeah, right. So it was about four hours by myself and about four hours with the rescue team. Mm. So they carried a lot of that, all that gear that went all the way down the 40 metres down to that tree right next to the river, they had to abseil down to recover that gear. They couldn't walk that in and out. Mm. So they're uh, abseiling down and then pulling pulling the gear back up. Mm. Wow. So... Um, does this end up costing you? Yeah, money? I was going to say, did they hit you with a bill or? No, no. So That's lucky. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, it, had they hit us with a bill, we got travel insurance. Yeah. Nice. Um, so you know, all how do you book fucking five camels? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Camel insurance. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I own an insurance broker. Yeah. Company, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Win win. Yeah, but it was it's some things that I was trying to insure. We have. A, chat with the insurers uh, and start explaining the concepts of what we're doing. Even, you know, I'm about, we don't care who you are. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Fuck yeah. Fuck it all. Right. 
Jesus. That's pretty uh, pretty hairy. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, we got through that. Yeah. I mean, we, two things went wrong, you know, in order to end, end up in that scenario. Mm. I needed like 20 things to go right to get out. Yeah. Um, all 20 went went off. Yeah. So uh, I, I can't consider that anything else other than a good day. Like, yeah. If two things go wrong and 20 things go right, you, yeah. you, you, you're doing well. It's a great so. way of looking at it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And no one died. No one no, died. No legs broken from camels. Nothing. Like we had you? a vet, vet come out and check, a, a check up on, uh, even the vet gave me a check over as yeah. well. <laughs> the same <laughs> skills apply. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. But yeah, she gave him all the, the tick off, said that the bags pretty much acted like a roll cage for wow. him. Wow. And uh, we were off the next day. Fuck yeah. We got Straight acrobat camels now. Wow. Yeah. They're just uh, flipping around. It fucked pretty, pretty hardy then. So uh, other than that, we got trapped in a snowstorm with the fire, uh, trapped in a fire, snowstorm. Where was the snowstorm? Was that up high or was that in the desert? Five days after we fell off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I was on a roll. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so was the camel. So <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we uh, we got to the top of Mount Skeen, and um, that weather, that bad weather system was still around. Yeah. So by the time we got up to the top, uh, now you're dealing that that gnarly weather uh, up there uh, is is a whole lot more intense, mm. and it comes with a front of snow as well. So we walked up, and it wasn't too bad once we got up there. Uh, but that first night, 140 kilometre hour winds and two foot of snow. Fuck. So I was up every hour or so brushing the ice off the camels uh, to stop them from freezing over. Yeah, I can't imagine a camel being in snow. But it's uh, never been an image that I've put them two things together. Well, you know what? Camels, they originated in the snow. That's where really? they started. Really? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, so in North America, that's where they found the oldest traces of camels. Mm. Uh, so the uh, oldest fossils and stuff like that yeah. are camels. So all of the design features that you see that you think make them for the desert, mm. all that happened in the snow. Yeah, right. So the feet that spread out over the sand originally yeah. for snow, the eyelashes to keep the sand out originally for snow, yeah. the winter coat, the cold winters, the and fat storage. And I guess storage. the fat store, yeah. Yeah, and the long periods without water for when everything's frozen. Wow. So they migrated across when there was a land bridge across the top and they wound up in the Middle East. Yeah. They, they didn't start there wow so they started because is that where <coughs> where and is that where we would talk you would have heard recently have you listened to the most recent rogan episode uh, no. with the north america's being covered in ice and and yep. stuff is, is is that how far back they sort of date back or originate or yeah or so you know? there's actually there's a really cool ted talk where a guy breaks it right down and it's only like 12 minutes yeah or something like that it's just a, one of those quirky kind of TED yeah, talks. Yeah, yeah. Um, the one that you'd never like <laughs> think you'd listen to. Yeah, but, but if you go TED Talk Camel, yeah. right, you're not going to have to scroll. Yeah, I'll listen to that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, TED Talk Camel, the top and probably only one. Yeah, uh, yeah this guy runs through it all, but it's, it's really cool. It's only, it's only 12 minutes, so, yep. you know, it's perfect. Perfect. Well, you know, toilet time. Yeah. Toilet time, Ted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ted yeah. toilet nice. time. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, perfect. Oh, wow. Um, I was going to say, um, so the snow, the camels, then from, was there pretty smooth sailing after that or? Uh, like like any, snakes and stuff. Any snakes? Yeah. snakes? Yeah, next, next we had a camel fall off a boat. We had a snake strike before though that happened. So I had a what, brown At the camel or at No, you? no, at, at me. So we had a brown strike, but I was wearing gaiters when you're walking down the side of the road. So it's a canvas kind of sleeve that goes over your pants and shoe, mm. yep. uh, which means the snake is never going to actually penetrate through. So it can strike, but it's not going to actually get through. So right. that protects me from just below my knee all the way down to the ankles. Like that's like. And you, so didn't, you didn't see it or hear it? Uh, and so just saw it, it? Go, just saw it go off, felt the strike, and then saw it go off. Fuck. So that was a brown snake. So just so unaware that it was even there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're mm. walking through grass. It's mm. so, you know, you're, oh. you're quite high. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. no wonder you're wearing that. Yeah, that make, yeah, makes... How the fuck does a camel fall off a boat? Yeah. So <laughs> 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 I, was, I, was a, I was a bit lazy. <laughs> And it was about 350 k's to walk around this river system. So at Lake's entrance, to get onto 90 Mile Beach, you can go all the way around the, the lakes and river systems, three, 400 k's, 300 k's, something like that. Uh, too fucking far anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to convince, I was in at the port trying to convince these barge operators, hey, can I just take my camels on your barge? Yeah. So I convinced <laughs> this guy to take a cam all my camels on his barge. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're heading through the river, <laughs> right, through the river mouth. There's like people just doing their everyday boating <laughs> and I'm just like got a bunch of camels. Hey! <laughs> camels were loving it, uh, but it was as we were unloading, he put the ramp down and um, 
one of the camels, its back legs got caught between the off ramp and the boat. Oh fuck! So um, he he got it out, but he he gashed into his leg yeah, quite fuck. a bit. So fuck. it took. Uh, I was dealing with that injury on him for about a month. So wow! Because wow. infection and. Yeah, yeah, and we, we're camped out on the beach for that whole entire month uh, So as we go down the beach. So it's just a lot of sand mm. and dirt and stuff like that. So it was just very hard to keep the, the I didn't even clean. think about you being near beach for some reason. I would have just thought it's straight across the middle. So you've okay. got some nice beach That's things. what normal people do. Yeah. You know, they get camels and they head straight for the centre. Yeah. So no one's ever walked camels for every state in Australia before, that, That's the f- let alone... Yeah, the so mother you, mother you mother after that, taking him to Tasmania. Yeah, because if you're going up to the NT, then you're sort of up the north. Yeah. And then th- that's where you crossed into WA? Yeah, correct. Yeah, so it, once we got down to the southern tip of Tasmania, we're like, all right, well, I could not be further from my intended end point. Yeah. Mm. All right, so now we get to weave up and, and go back through. But I, I went all the way up through Cameron's Corner, uh, the edge of the Shresle- uh, sorry, the edge of the Simpson Desert. Um, in order to get back up to that original route that I was, mm-hmm. I was going. So did you get? Did you go fishing at all? You catch any fish, mate? Right. You don't need to with camels. Yeah. All right. Literally, you could, all you do. All right. You just walk down with camels. I don't have to throw one pot in. The, in. I don't have to go diving. I'd have to throw a line in the water, and all the locals are just like, "Here's the crayfish. <laughs> Here's the salmon. Here's <laughs> the abalone." <laughs> mate, I, I finally <laughs> realised what it's like. To have tits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I walk into a pub, people buy you a beer. Yeah. Where are you staying? You want to stay at mine? <laughs> you, you come back to mine. As, oh, as long as you bring fuck. the camels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you bring your tits, you're, you're fine. Come <laughs> in. My oh, lovely like, man. humps. Yeah. Wow. Oh, mate. That's it's like awesome. talking cheese. Now I've finished the trek. You know, I've got to pay for my own yeah, drinks. Yeah. No one <laughs> offers me a place to stay. Start rocking up to bars yeah. with a camel. Yeah. <laughs> hey. But uh, like after experiencing all of this, like what, what's the end the end point's Geraldton is it yeah and like what does it feel like when you finish and you like the journey's done did yeah. you just go I want to get back out there what's it like it must must feel like a, almost a sense of loss yeah yeah it was hard because I, I, I loved it right up until the end mm. right so you know in some ways it makes it you know, good that I loved it right up until the end, but in another way, I'm I'm leaving something that I love. Mm. You know, that was a way of life for me for four and a half years. Yeah, it was pretty a, sad having to be in Geraldton. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I, I'm mates with the mayor of Geraldton, so I can't wait to show him that. <laughs> <laughs> what was the what was the uh, why why Geraldton? Yeah, because you were mates with the mayor. Or yeah, look, he planted the seed a little bit. Originally, I was going to finish up in Coral Bay, but mm. it's a bit hard for friends and family and that to get up there just for the weekend to come and see us at the end. Then, yep. then I toyed with the idea of coming back down to Perth and finishing in Perth. Mm. And I think the John that left, like, um, you know, would have loved the attention of doing that. Mm. You know, we'd finish on a high, get a, you know, get a lot of press, a yeah. lot of that kind of stuff would happen. But I, I pictured what the last two or three weeks on the trek would be like. Mm. And that would be just dealing with, like, people, like, you'd, like you'd be bringing the circus to town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that would have, I thought, really would take away from me enjoying the the last three weeks of the trek, whereas Geraldton, I, I hit the town the day I hit the town, yep. and, then, and then you're at the coast. That's it. So I was on station country right up until two nights before I, I, yeah. I finished the trek, yep. and that was that was a much more it's beautiful way to enjoy smaller, yeah. the end of the, the trek. So, yeah, I, I suppose it was also one of the reflections to to me that it, like yeah, you have changed a bit, buddy, because yeah. you would have loved the glory of coming through. <laughs> Camels down the terrace, mm. you know, like or finishing at Langley Park, you know, you yeah. would have frothed off that. So the yeah. and I, I empathise a little bit. Obviously, completely different situation, but that hundred kilometre marathon versus the eighty kilometre. The eighty kilometre was in the middle of nowhere, nothing, and it was incredible. The start of the hundred was no one around, nothing, just me and Steve yep. in the hills, and that yep. felt so good. Once you guys sort of joined, we were going through like suburbs and it just didn't feel... It was great. I don't, it was yeah. such a rewarding experience and great way to end. But fuck, just running by ourselves out in the middle of nowhere just seems so much yeah. nicer. Yeah. So much better. So I guess that adventure side, and you would have had a lot longer to sort of think about that. And yeah. Like, nah, I'll, I'll finish in a... Mm. And I think I'd done my dash on the East Coast. Like I, I town hopped down the East Coast and all the way through into Tassie. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I'd, I'd experienced that part of the trek yep. so much over the first you know 18 months or so yeah that i was Got i was, re- I was ready for the remote yeah yeah now i heard tasmania is meant to be beautiful um i it's somewhere that we don't really think about too much 
um, except for families banging each other. <laughs> <laughs> but like from all I hear, it's absolutely amazing down there. Is that was that your experience? Or One of the highlights of the trip. Yeah, right. Like I, I hadn't intended or included Tasmania originally. Yeah. But people kept on saying how far south you're gonna go. I'm like, fucking let's see how far south we can get. Yeah. Like, you know, you've got to go to Tassie to yep. see that. And so I had intended to just go and do a token kind of yep. you know, touch touch it and yep. you know, head back and end up spending five and a half months there. Wow. That's right. fucking heaps. Yeah, so Jeez. for such a small little place, I put a lot of time in there, and that Tasmania made me want that, you know. Like, yeah. so my original intention was to leave in January. I didn't leave till March, so wow. it was it was twice twice distance, and and it was so it would give you an indication. I did twelve hundred k's in Tasmania in five and a half months. On the Canning Stock route, I did twelve uh, twelve hundred k's in six weeks. Yeah, so right. you know, like. We, we we had the capability to smash out Tasmania in six weeks, but yep. instead we chose to take take nearly six. And months. some of the place, uh, some of Tasmania is completely, you can't get through it, eh? At yeah, all, 100%. yeah, hundred percent unexplored. We, oh yeah, we had another rescue in Tasmania. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I keep forgetting about that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so we, we were in Longford. Uh, we we're coming down this place called Poetina Hill, and I was just. I was getting a bit cocky with my camels again, like, oh, yeah, we can, anywhere a horse can go, I can take my camel train. Yeah, yeah not true. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, I just got on this really gnarly, steep kind of country. Yeah. Um, because of what had happened previously, I was a little bit more clued in that emergency services would rather come and, and help you out of a situation than recover you from you know, a, sh- a shitty shit, yeah. the shit that you've got yourself into. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I was a bit more preemptive with that one. So, uh, again, hit the SOS and, uh, but then communicated with the local police and said, oh, look, we're just going to need a few more hands just to walk me out of this because I can't do it by myself. Because it was too steep? Too, way too steep. Yeah, right. So, when they're all, atta- when all the camels were attached together, only one would have to resist going up mm. yeah. and then the rest stop and it just, yeah, we, we would yeah. have been trapped down there for a few days. Yeah. So, yeah, a few more hands on deck. We can s- separate out the camel train. Yeah. People, people gathered around. I was like, all right, everyone gets a 15-minute camel train and camel handling training <laughs> course. <laughs> so you're on the side of this mountain training <laughs> all these emergency <laughs> services. <laughs> so I just, what do you do? Yeah, yeah sit. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. Push. Uh, yeah. So, um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, it's actually, I heard some of them getting interviewed after and they're like, yeah, it was really good. So we learned about this and we learned <laughs> about that. And, yeah, it was a really rewarding experience. <laughs> What's it? Because you've... You've basically done this in the, almost the best possible time. Oh, nailed it. Because like, like, that was a complete fluke. Because you know. COVID obviously shutting down mm. everything, you've it was just avoided it. Avoided it completely. Yeah. Um, excess, I guess the only issue you may have faced would have been crossing borders. Would that have been an issue at some point? Yeah, so uh, I was in Victoria during the lockdown, so it was a couple of applications to get out into Tassie. Once you're in Tassie, you were fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then as soon as I got back to the mainland, I trucked the camels straight to Mildura, so I was on the edge of the deserts. Mm. And no one's checking for border crossing and anything like that. So yeah. you would, it, would you even know when you've crossed a border? Oh, I didn't, have, didn't have a reception as well, so I'm not really uh, up to date with the news and what yeah. the protocols were. And look, I don't think that anyone was really worried about, you know, an epidemic of camel people. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah, you let yeah. one guy <laughs> a camel yeah, yeah. man through and then all the camel people yeah. come through. And it's pretty... It's <laughs> like, mate, if you want to fucking train up six camels <laughs> and wander around in the middle instead of your apartment in Geelong, yeah. Yeah. Right, go for and it. Let's be honest, if... Like the McGowan government was going to pull you up and then make a spectacle of it that it wouldn't reflect pretty well upon him. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. like, mate, there's a fucking guy who's been travelling across the country for fucking four years. Yeah. Fuck off. Well, well, <laughs> well I, I'm lucky that I didn't have to have that brought brought yeah. to my table. And I see how much like mental energy it's taken from people because it affected their lives so, so much. And yeah. I just feel one of the biggest gifts of the trip was I didn't have to invest too much in research or have a stand on something or not have a stand on yeah. something or or position myself for it. And it, ha- coming back only a month ago, it's kind of like, shit, it just seems like it's a non-event now. Yeah. So Well, it, yeah, um, you've, um, you've literally just... Yeah. yeah, you've got you've. <laughs> it's like you've gone into a coma for the three years, haven't had to deal with it. Yeah, yeah so I, I feel really lucky about, yeah. about not having to have invested so much mental space yeah. in into that. Mm. So yeah, it's been very frustrating. Uh, I guess if you you are mates with the mayor of Geraldton, probably had it in anyway. If you wanted to come back, <laughs> <laughs> could have stuck through. He, he planted the seed before I started. Uh, you know, I mentioned I went up to Parabadoo to train some camels. Yeah. So on the way back. Perth. I stopped in at his place for the night and had a couple of couple of cans and 
oh, you should finish in Jero, mate. And I was yeah. like, fuck Jero. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so as I started to get closer down towards the, the end, I was like, oh, well, Jero sounds be- actually pretty yeah. good, better than better than heading all the way down to Perth, better yeah. than going to Coral Bay. Got, got an airport, so people from over east that I've yeah. met that yeah. want to come, like, yeah. bang, they can fly straight in. And so I yeah. give him a call. I'm like, mate, I think I think about finishing Jarrow. What, what do you do? He's like, mate, we'll open the pubs in your honour. We'll shut down the streets. Fuck you know, right. you, you can have your run in town. I'm like, well, I'm starting to like Jarrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like Jarrow's pretty oh. good. And when I got there, man, they've done a lot of redevelopment along the foreshore. Yeah, yeah. So that was one of the big projects that um, Shane, the mayor, kind of jumped in behind as one of his first things he did, and he fucking nailed it. Sick. Like, so the the beach is pretty damn good you just got to go there when it's not like uh, massively windy some seasons windy. yeah yep. but you know it's crayfish everywhere like that's yep. the underground currency of Geraldton. yeah mm. right and it's like you do a favor <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's meth inside a crayfish <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's when, that's when you know you've done a really good brick paving job oh mate you've got six of the special craze you know <laughs> yeah well we actually might need that hookup because we're going to do a journey up meth. to Exmouth. no <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. The man, like, the man. You're, you're really open. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned it was really open and on his podcast. Like, wow, no, Jesus, uh, the mayor. Because we're going to do a show there on the way up to Exmouth. We're going to yeah. do some stand up um, in Jero. Oh yeah, mate. He'll welcome yeah. you with open arms. Yeah, but, well, anyone coming? To was there many people there? Was it a, like a? Yeah, it's great. Thing? We had we had uh, host families that had kind of and some people who owned some stations that had come in from all oh, over awesome. Australia. And um, they got cash to fly. Yeah, so. I went the hat do, mate. Flights yeah. at the moment. There was one family that came across from Gundagai, uh, stayed at their place, Kaimo Estate. Yeah, um, uh, they would have had to spend like ten bloody Jeez. grand on flying the family like Fuck. back and forth because it's not just the over east then you've got the perth Jero leg as well like yeah, so yeah, not yeah. cheap so um, um wow. when someone rocked up from all the way across the other side like you were really appreciative like yeah. thanks for coming down and they just pop in for the weekend kind of thing you know? that's awesome and yeah. did you set a guinness world record i have no idea like i, I just do this shit other people can figure yeah. that out later like I'd, uh, it feels like it would be some well, how, how far did you, thing. yeah how far did you walk uh twelve thousand one hundred and seventy three kilometers yeah wow so it look maybe longest pub crawl yeah <laughs> like, like, we didn't pass one yeah like, we hit every single one yeah, so i'm not nice. sure what, what that's fucking pretty yeah, cool uh, that might be all right pint, that's Taking the piss out of my pint to pint idea. Yeah. <laughs> like yours, well, I might have to rename the Camel Trek Forest Hump because yeah. it just, <laughs> just went the whole journey <laughs> and didn't stop. Um, yeah. And uh, Tassie, Tasmanian Tiger, do you think it's out there being in the wilderness? Do you think it could be there? Mate, there's so much, like, there's so much country out there this is so hard to access mm. now on that west coast like that's gnarly yeah mm. like there could be stuff living out there that you just never laid eyes on that yep. you know might take 20 or 30 years for anyone to discover yeah mm. right you know interesting like, uh, even if you're hunting for it yep. like you're limited it's not like you can just go for a drive and weave through everything yeah. everywhere well, I, there. Cou- I couldn't believe like because I, I i didn't know and we we live in our own country. There's deers. I didn't know there was deer. Yeah. I have no idea why. I didn't mm. know that. I didn't know there was... You had uh, no idea? I had no idea. <laughs> was it... Is it bo- bison? Bo- bo- uh, water uh, buffalo? On a water, water buffalo, sorry, up north. And well, they did you bump into any of them? Because yeah. they would be dangerous, right? Yeah, well, I, I jumped into one and sat on its head. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, by purpose or by yeah, accident? Yeah, well, uh, so uh, at the Uluru Camel Farm, yeah. uh, the guy at the back, Chris Hill, he's a bit of a mad bugger. Yeah. Uh, nice guy. Yeah. Um, but he's just got this pet water buffalo in his backyard. Yeah. Uh, and this thing's quiet as. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it's a bit of a thing where you kind of just go and sit on his back or, you know, sit near his head and get a photo of, like, you know, the <laughs> number <laughs> stay pose on the, yeah. top of a, <laughs> the top of a water buffalo. That's pretty sick. But so it, if, you, if you're going across that sort of top end of Northern Territory down into WA, yep. crocodiles, yeah, that's like awesome. water so buffalo, no, stuff I, like I that. sat below the crocodile turf the whole entire time. So okay. I, I probably only went uh, – I, I never bounced above about 400 k's above Tropical Capricorn the okay. whole way across. Yeah. So – uh, again, what I'll probably do is I'll uh, I'll flick you a picture of a map of, of exactly where I went, yep. and then that way you can throw that up on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah cool. Is it um, Arm Arman Land? Is that what no. it's uh, yeah. is that what it's called? Uh, Arnhem Land. Arnhem Land. Yeah. Is, is no, that's you, well not. That's, that's well, well not. So you didn't go that sort of no, far. No, okay. yeah. and that's pretty gnarly territory for the camels as well because it's quite swampy and stuff. Mm. And the, the nemesis for for camels is is constant wet ground. Okay. Because uh, they're soft footed. It's almost yeah. like a dog paw, that, that, that rubbery kind of texture. Yeah. yeah. If that spends a long time in, in moisture, they end up rotten. And yeah. Like you wouldn't just spend too long in the bath, it just ends up soft. Yeah. And 
Did you um did you come across anything you didn't expect? Like either like in the middle of the Australia with no humans, was there still litter? Or was there something random that you were like, what the fuck's this doing here? Or no. unexpected? No, no, there wasn't too... Like, there was a couple of strange a couple of strange bits of equipment and stuff out there, but, like, litter and stuff was pretty damn pretty damn good. Okay. Like, it wasn't too bad. Like, you pick your states, they're like, yeah. oh, this state's a bit a bit, a bit wrong, a bit horrid for, yeah. for litter. And w- it, WA wasn't too bad. Yeah. And then how do you feel now? Like, what do you... Do you is there something you want to do now, or yeah. do you just go right? I'm just going to sort of rest on this for a bit. And I've I've gone think. I've gone back to work. Yeah, um, is, it, cra- is it driving you crazy or no? No, it's not too bad. It's good. Like, so the same as with the trek where I left when I loved it. Mm. You know, as much as I'd kind of run to a point at work, I still loved it. Yeah. at the end. So I just didn't have to wait for something shitty to happen for me to leave. I think sometimes people are wanting you to say like. Oh, there was a, a money scare, relationship breakup, a yeah. health scare, or or something that kicked you into gear or kicked you into action. And I think when they're when they're telling you that, what they're trying to say is that, that that's what they would need. You know, they're, mm. they're looking for a trigger or a reason in order to change themselves, or yeah, they yeah. need that to change themselves. Yeah. So I, I recognise that that would eventually come. Yeah. Right. Oh, it would either burn out or the health issue would come, or uh, you know you party too much or so, something would have happened yep. uh, that would have kicked me into gear I just didn't have to wait for that yeah. in order to enact the change yeah. so I have faith that the, that would happen there. also with the trek I, I, I didn't have to start without too much of a why yeah. I know that if I start without too much of a why then I've probably got my eyes open to find the ones that I'll you know, yeah. uh, stumble across along the way yeah. and, and that happened pretty early on in the trek so I start this idea this crazy idea without really much of a why other than you know, change and adventure yeah and then um, I go to my local GP and he uh, – I say, oh, look, I'm pissing a cup and take some blood, make sure I'm okay to start walking through deserts and doing this crazy stuff. Yeah. Mm. So he just happened to be a skin, a skin specialist. So he goes, I'm going to do a skin checkup as well. Um, so at my first ever skin check, I found a melanoma in the centre of my back. Jesus. So if I wasn't doing this trek, uh, I never would have got that check. Wow. It's four and a half and years ago. Could have, could, yeah, taken hold. Especially oh, in wow. the sun. Yeah. Like this could be a completely different conversation. Yeah. Uh, so right did, that, did it also make you more aware on the trip? Like, fuck, cover up? You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was long sleeve, long pants, the whole entire track, yeah. and the Akubra is still on. Yeah, because yeah. it would be less sun cream and more just yeah, cover you, up. You can't really use sun, sun cream too much out there because it's like three weeks to the next shower. Mm. So you chuck on sunscreen and all the dirt and the dust and the sticks desert to sticks to you and then you go to sleep in your swag and you just leave all the shit in your swag. So yeah, um, yeah, you, you're generally not showering, you're not putting too much stuff on your skin. Yeah. It's actually really good for my skin. My skin had never been better out there. Yeah, right. No soap, no produce, no, no, no shit that I'm throwing on it. Yep. You sweat out naturally every day and as soon as i come back to uh the city and start mm. showering every day my skin's not as good yeah right drying out you know yeah. it, was, it was better with no shower at all yeah. that's insane. well it's there was incredible. a guy that um in oh, i think lebanon or one of the or iran or somewhere i saw the world's dirtiest man hadn't had a shower for 70 years and they convinced him to have a shower and he died the next day Fuck yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. Because so, yeah, yeah. the reason he hadn't shot a shower, he thought that he was going to die um, from the um, germs or something. Yeah. And he literally had a shower and he died. Oh, my God. Oh. Insane, right? So, but he can't even go, fucking told you, cunt. Yeah. Like, he oh. Died, like, yeah. Literally the next day or the day after. Um, there isn't so something to any, it, though, the natural way. So did you, you, always good. Yeah. you not have a partner? Did you have a partner when you went? No, so I started seeing someone ju- like just as I start, uh, started walking on the trek. So yeah. we had like a FIFO relationship. She's yeah. a Perth girl, really feet nice in, girl. Feet in, feet out. <laughs> <laughs> so she, uh, she'd come in and on and off the trek for a little bit. Yeah. But obviously that kind of distance was a little bit tough. So, yeah. you know, that, that was, uh, so that split up. So I, I decided that uh, I wouldn't really have a relationship for the rest of the trek. Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple of girlfriends that I, uh, you know, a couple of girls that would walk with me for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, very only very occasionally. Were they like groupies or <laughs> no? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not really. They, 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 yeah, uh, call them friends, hump, humpies. They're, they're yeah, friends. I, I, was try, I was trying to think. <laughs> I, I think there was a couple that called them a couple that called themselves the Camelettes. <laughs> And they're definitely going to listen to this podcast. <laughs> say, hey, Camelot. Shout out, Camelot. Yes, the Camelot. How good. That's Camelot. Um, King mate. Arthur in the Camelot. But, you know, if, if you're interested in getting laid, don't take camels across Australia. <laughs> it does not happen. It does not happen very... 
<laughs> yeah. It's not a fucking draw card. No, it's not a thing. <laughs> no, it's such a fucking incredible journey. I feel yeah. like like a, a two hour, one and a half hour podcast. Do it justice, yeah, it doesn't do it justice, but it's been cool. Just the whole idea of the fact that you had the balls to even just think. The camels did them, except yeah, for Charlie. <laughs> yeah, but just, just the brave. It's such a bravery, a leap of faith to just go. Oh, I'm just fuck this. I'm mm. going to. Comp- and th- this isn't like a. A quitting a job or something. This is a complete life change for four four and a half years. You've yeah, four and, and a half years. Yeah, four and a half. Yeah. So yeah, a year of training and prepping, and then yep. three and a half of walking. But my thought was that in the extremes that you know maybe hopefully brings a bit of perspective to some of the other challenges that people might be facing mm. in their own life, and they can kind of go. So that guy can go from office worker to that mm. with not much experience, and and then and then come back. You know, yep. not because it was just just to do it. Then maybe that. And job change or relationship change or something like that. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's not as full on as I might think. be making it out to be. You yeah. know, like you can get through that stuff and you can you learn about yourself and survive. So yeah. I guess financials, did you have because you had the business, was that yeah. giving you money or was it did you have savings? Yeah, no, so I had uh, the the business paying paying us whilst yep. I was going. Uh, but it switched. It was like from supercar penthouse on the terrace. Yeah. Uh, like Traveling, yeah. spending four or five months a year overseas. Wow! Uh, to one day, um, I'm probably trying to live off about 40, 50 grand a year. Yeah. Yep. So I set myself a specific kind of limit. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I've also got to fund all the camel gear and yep. all that, all that stuff out of that. So first year actual living expenses probably yeah. funded out about 20, 25 grand. Yeah. Yep. So I go from like Cuban cigars and twenty five year old rum. Yeah. Wow. To like uh, champion ruby darts. <laughs> And I'm still in the northern side. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's do, incredible. Do you do, do, do you have that uh, an, an urge to go back to that, or has this sort of yeah. like humbled you, or like leveled you out, or just made you appreciate less material things, or or made you urge appreciate for them more? more? Uh, yeah. Oh, there's certain things. Like as soon as I got back, well, uh, one of the, my mates, he, he knows I know exactly what you want. And he brought me my 25 year old rum. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. But yeah. I know I don't have to pick one or the other. Yeah. yeah. You know, That's so cool. chances are I'll probably have some kind of hybrid life afterwards, as most people would expect. Where you know you pick bits for your previous life that you kind of liked, and yeah. Yeah. you learnt a lot more about yourself. So I, I heard this great quote. Um, it's a T. S. Eliot quote. Um, we shall never cease from exploration, and at the end of all of our exploring, will be to return to where we started and see the place for the first time. So you know, oh, I'm back that. into the same yeah. place, but yeah. it's uh, it is you looking very eyes. different. Yeah, oh, I love it. Is T.S. Eliot your granddad or something? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he only spelled it with one dat and one t. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, that's it. that's really good. Yeah. I want you to text me that um, yeah. quote. That's yeah. good. I like that. Wow, that's really good because that's all life is. It's just an experience and seeing it from different perspectives and 100%. and learning as your journey evolves yeah. and as you evolve as a person. Is yeah. there a book going to come out? Or are you going to just do this? Do you enjoy talking about it? Is it something that you're no, going to get? No, it's definitely a book. So yeah. about halfway through the book now. Yeah. So uh, early next year, I plan to redrive the camel track. So I'm going to jump in the seventy nine series. Go for a bit of a. Oh, uh, we should drive. jump on some of that. <laughs> like, like just come along, yeah. even jump for a in. few days. Like jump in. Fuck, I'd just invite yourself, eh? Mate, he might not like us, mate. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see how the editing yeah. goes on this <laughs> thing. <laughs> Man <laughs> shoots vegan with gun. <laughs> <laughs> You're in. Yeah. <laughs> I That's like it. This guy's got balls. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds incredible. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Do you have a working title or are you going to release that? No, like no, that? no idea. And it's like, uh, I'm. I'm Look, I've got a story to tell, but mm. like writing's not my my gift or my skill. Yeah. So it would be one of those things where I want to get that first ed- uh, first edit out. Yeah. Um, so camelettes. redriving the yeah, camel the trek, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. redriving the camel trek, and actually sitting in the places where I had the experience and finishing off those parts of the book there. Yeah, cool. And I've got a combination of video diaries and notes and stuff I've taken along the way. But then I'm going to need to work with someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm going to need to sit down with someone and uh, someone who really knows what they're doing. Yeah. And hopefully sharpen that down into story but i think it's important that i write the first edit yeah for sure myself mm. so that at least we start from that basis yep. and then so go yeah, um alan roberts had all of his diaries and he went yeah. through with a with a writer and he sort of went through and, and wrote his book so he did a motorbike journey from london london to the tip of africa up to russia yeah uh, and then back to australia back down to australia yeah, it's like yeah. a 900 day riding a motorbike across the globe yeah, yeah right. through africa and same sort of thing like kept a journey a journal yep. um, yeah video cameras weren't as prominent back then and yep. all that stuff but yep. um yeah those sorts of, and 
just for yourself. Yeah. It'd be amazing to have it. You said there was a filmmaker came out every now and then. Is there going to be a doco on it or a little mini documentary or something? Yeah, so I'd, I'd say we'd probably pair them together. So yep. uh, once the book's finished, then we'll go to the civil rules, hopefully maybe even get some of the streaming services over yes. in the US yeah. onto it. So and, and call it probably the same thing maybe to help or would it be like a two different no yeah, so, yeah it's probably two different and yeah. then that way um yeah, yeah. I, I can go to my filmmaker m- mate it's like everyone keeps saying mate the book seems better than the movie <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that's great yeah. oh, it's so uh, but we've got like 14.8 terabytes of footage well he's got 14.8 yeah. i've got another couple of terabytes worth of footage as well so yeah. there's there's plenty of content there it's just a matter of trying to fill out the story so yeah. again just need the the correct expertise because that post-production uh, yep. of doing something like that, as oh. you guys would know, dabbling in, in this kind of area, Mate, doing that's the most expensive part, the post-production, to get it done well and someone who knows how to mm. polish the turd. And <laughs> doing the like the editing side of things, which I, I do, sometimes it's that stuff. You've got the best footage yep. and you have to cut it. Yeah. Because mm. it's just, you're like, fuck, I want that shot in the scene, but yep. I just... It's not going to fit. Yeah. And mm. that, that kills you. But that's where, like, I think um, if you've got the, the option to put it on, like, a, a Patreon or something like that, it's like, this is behind the scenes. This is shit that you didn't get to see. This yeah. is me fucking, like, crying on one day or whatever. Like, and it's such in, something that you could use. And it's, I think, it's like, some degree, if you're if you're really close to the project, like Cam is and I am, yeah. right, you're, you're too attached to that mm. shot. Mm. All right, and so you're not the expert at telling the story. Yeah. yeah. So you know, so someone has to be. Maybe they read my book in order to get the footage, yeah. in order to you know fulfill the story. Yeah. Uh, and someone's got to have a talent at doing that. Yeah. That's, gotta, that's that's the kind of people we need on the on the yeah. team there. Spielberg We've got a uh, filmmaker <laughs> documentary Ron aspiring Jeremy. filmmaker <laughs> right here. <so> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, mate. It sounds incredible. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's fucking exciting. And yeah. I guess the un- there unknown future is probably what excites you the most. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, that's why I don't really... People ask what adventure's next. And I'm like, well, who knows how either of those things are going to pan out? Yeah. And who knows what doors will open or shut as a result of that? Yeah. You know, like, once it, the you know the guy who shoots vegans gets out, <laughs> you know, those doors close. <laughs> like, who knows what other doors open, so... That's brilliant. Um, Jam, do you have anything as a listener? Any questions or...? No, it was very interesting. I was, um, any random people just walked in the middle of nowhere or anything like that or never, like, just did not bump into any randoms at all. So yeah. you're walking along, you see people camping out there and you're just like, what are you doing out here? No, that's, like, no, the only real one I was sort of wondering, eh? No, yeah. there, there, there wasn't too much, but there, there was a couple of people that kind of rocked up to my camp. So I had a GPS tracker on me. Mm. Right, so anyone who had the link could see exactly where I was at, right. at any point for the whole entire trek. Yeah. yeah. So as opposed to being, uh, you know, running into a random rand, random run, run into, into me you. so yeah. I'm thinking like I'm done for the day it's all good and all of a sudden there's like 16 utes with like where did a body with a camel <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's fucking forex and Bundy and shit getting out and oh. certain stuff getting thrown on the table <laughs> like, oh, right. we're in so um, yeah it was pretty nuts uh, like for some of those because you, you could be dead to the world yeah and, and I, I briefly <laughs> this is a strange one for you so I was in this I won't mention the town. Yeah. Uh, I was in this town, yeah. uh, and I put I put <laughs> I put Tinder on. Yeah. <laughs> first time. But uh, I'm just sleeping in a park on a park bench. I got my swag out on the top of the park bench. It's raining. Yeah, all right. A bit of a tarp up, uh, and it's just after midnight. All right, and this girl had obviously seen. Oh, that that camel bloke's on Tinder. <laughs> all right, he's 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 probably down. Yeah. All right. So this is the most Australian kind of Aussie accented girl that kind of rocks up. Yeah. Yeah. With a six pack. Yeah. Oh, you want a beer, mate? <laughs> like, like, real. <laughs> the most Aussie. And she was singing, like, by the end of that six pack, like, she's going to be in. And she was making moves to get in the swag. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, like, shifting down with my hand, deleting fucking Tinder. From <laughs> 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 and there's no escape, like... I'm sleeping out in the open. You're sleeping in a park. There's yeah. no like oh, going into a next <laughs> room or whatever. Like <laughs> yeah. she's in it. Yeah. She's in my room. You can't be like, I'm gonna go home now. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. yeah I've got to go. And yeah. worst of all, the sex was terrible. <laughs> 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 I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, what what, um, what was the biggest um, take? Did you have a favourite person? I'll probably we'll wrap up in a sec. Did you have yeah. a favourite person that you met other than her? 
And was there a big takeaway that you learned? You're talking about the why at mm. the end of it. Yeah. Um, I, you kind of briefly touched on that, which was, you know, you can you can go and do it. You didn't need a reason why. But, um, yeah, was there anything yeah, it's, that... Yes, standout why? person is the old guy. No one of the camels after him, Ted. Yeah. Uh, so, Ted Heaton was an old fellow. He was in his 80s now, so about 83. Yeah. Uh, he he tra- spent 25 years travelling Australia with camels in a wagon. Oh, well, there you and go. His yeah, Aboriginal right. wife. And he just lived this really unique kind of life. Yeah. So, uh, and he just lives out on his own in the bush now. Right. So I stumbled across him just just as I got my camels okay. for, for the first time. And he kind of took me under the wing. You know, I mentioned I would use those trust-based training methods. Yeah. He had slightly different approaches. <laughs> he comes from the old school, yeah. right? So he's like, if the camel's not doing what it's told, then tie the cut to a tree and then light a big fire on him and smoke the <laughs> cunt out for a few days and then he'll do what he's fucking long told. <laughs> I was like... I've got a few other things I might try first, Ted. You know, like, like he means well, but yeah. like, like he comes from the old school, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm like, oh, you know, tie tie the camel next to a post and wait, yeah, wait until he's ready. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. Uh, but but he was great. He took me under his wing, and uh, anything that he knew, I knew. That's cool. Uh, he was an amazing kind of guy, just very interesting kind of guy, very interesting character, and very alone. So there's a lot of lonely guys out there in the bush, man. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that's by Look. choice, or is that is it a product of being out there on their own? Of combination, yeah, combination, combination of many factors. But there's, you know, it's hard to entice girls out there to live that kind of life. So yeah. there's just guys out there working the land that, um, you know, maybe had to crack at marriage once, but then that didn't work uh, or yeah. just mm. never happened. Yeah, um, and um, guys who have just retreated out there as well, so maybe yep. societal issues and stuff like that, and they've just decided that it's better to re- retreat from society, but they're yep. still desperate for conversation yep. and interaction and human connection. Yeah, so uh, they see a weird camel guy walking down the street, they just assume he's one of us. So yep. I connected with a lot of these people across there, and the, yeah, it's yeah, um, right. it, it one of the reasons why I'll redrive that trek is to reconnect with those people. Yeah, again. cool. Yeah, it's mm. awesome. So yeah, in regards to advice, I don't know. Like, um, I kind of feel like I'm a university student, right? It's just finished the yeah. gra- just finished graduation, and now I'm just landing my first job, and mm. I have no idea what I've learned and how it or like how, how it applies into everyday life. Yeah. So, I um, I walked in this one house, right? And it had a sign on the wall that said, "Life is short, lick the bowl." Mm. But I'm pretty sure they should have put that in the kitchen, not in the toilet. <laughs> 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 right, so there's there's a bit of advice that I may have, but yeah. if people plug it into the wrong in area in their life, they'll probably end up eating shit. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm running some tests at the moment. Nice. Yes. And, uh, and I reckon uh, in about, you know, five, six months, you know, yeah. come back after I've gone, oh, that actually applies back out here as well. Yep. I probably feel more comfortable going, hey, you know, and, and here's something you can take yeah, away yeah. that I, I found worked both there and... Yeah, and here. Oh, that's you a great sound, answer. You sound like uh, you're on the right track in in that regard. It's, it feels like you're um, you sort of uh, you, you're just going to feel it out. And there's no yeah. ego there. Yeah. saying, Hey, this is what I've done, and this is what you need to learn. So that's pretty yeah. fucking cool. Yeah, exactly. I think there's probably more value in just sharing the story and let people mm. take whatever from they want. Yeah. Like so, people have all different experiences and they come up from different different angles. So someone will take something completely different to an experience mm. I went through that, than I did. So yeah. all I do is just share it as openly and honestly as I can yep. and uh, hopefully hopefully there's something in there for someone. Yeah, mm. fucking oath. Sounds yeah. like connect, human connection is important. We've mm. judged off that last little chapter. Yeah. Mm. With all the blokes out there. It's a, f- a fucking incredible journey. Mm. It's an awesome so story. Cool. And Thanks I, for sharing. Yeah, yeah and sharing. please do awesome. tell us if you're going to do a, uh, a screening of it or anything like that, the yeah. doco or the, the and the book and all that, because yeah. we'll definitely love to be in, involved and come and watch. And, yeah, and, that uh, sounds great. And, awesome. Yeah, plug it. So, uh, Anything else you want to plug before yeah. you finish off? No, yeah. so if people want to kind of follow along and check out the journey, uh, John ART on Instagram. Uh, but you can pretty much just Google John Camel or <laughs> I think you just go man five camels and a dog, man <laughs> six camels and a dog. Like no one else is doing this. Yeah, like, yeah, you, know, yeah. you throw a dart at Google with anything Camel and John and you're going to hit me. Yeah. So, yeah. And cool. did you find a home for the camels? I heard on 6PR you're looking to, to put them somewhere. Yeah, look, I f- found somewhere up in Chittering Valley. Sweet. So nice. uh, oh, It's beautiful up there. Oh, really nice. Yeah. So um, uh, hopefully we'll be trucking them from Geraldton back to... To uh, Chittering next Wednesday. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Wow. I'll be back with the boys. Oh, yeah, fuck good. you, Bill. Fuck you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and Arthur. Uh, Delby, you want to plug anything? Um, look, after that pod, I think I'll just save it all because um, it was. Yeah. It's good. Um, yeah. Just jump on the Patreon. 
yeah. for us. I'll plug on my shows on Thursday because we've got um, yeah. a drug and alcohol specialist and emo jumping on. Yeah, sick. Yeah, no, I've got nothing uh, cool. on tonight, but there's no point plugging that. So, yep. sick. Cool. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. on, mate. Really, my really pleasure, guys. It. Yeah. Bye bye. Camelot. Camelot. <laughs>